Chapter 1 The Worst Crossing Diachan, Zhenmi, Kai Wenji Guanyu, Zhang Fei, Zhao Zilong Zhou Yu, Guijia, Zhuge Liang Where are you guys? System System Where's the traveler's system? Why after three years, I have nothing? The brocade-clad child mumbled a moment later, and then looked up to the sky, and sighed. Young master, what's wrong with you? Where are you uncomfortable? The maid looked at the young master, with an anxious face, very flustered. If the young master in front of her became ill, she would not be spared a chastisement. It's okay, it's okay. See how scared you are. The corners of the young master's mouth curled up slightly, and his voice was still milky when he spoke. The maid looked at the young master with a smiling face and was slightly relieved, constantly patting her chest. Instead, the young master's gaze was fixed somewhere. Young master? The maid tensed again when she saw the young master's dull gaze ahem, nothing. You don't understand. Go down, I'll stay by myself. The young master blushed slightly and quickly waved his hand for the maid to leave. Sin 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 sin. With some heartfelt remorse, he turned his face toward the sky. The young master is our protagonist, Lu Zhang. That's right, Lu Zhang Lu Jiu, the later Han Yizhou shepherd. Only the soul is no longer Lu Zhang from the end of the Han dynasty, but a traveler from the 21st century. Lu Zhang was originally a great young man in the 21st century, a senior student in the history department, very keen on studying the history of the Han dynasty. Only because the family is too poor, there is no way out, by chance to join the fitness industry, as a fitness instructor for eight years. As if God had played a joke on him, he was accidentally smashed to death while jerking iron at night once. It's too much of a loser. This is what Lu Zhang had in mind, before he died unexpectedly, fate played another joke on him. It made him reborn at the end of the Han dynasty and became Lu Zhang, the most lousy vassal at the end of the Han dynasty. Familiar with the history of the late Han dynasty, he knew very well the life of Lu Zhang. Inexplicably, he became the pastor of Ijou and was toyed with by the Ijo family. I wanted to spend my life peacefully, but I didn't expect Lu Bei to steal Ijou. He was forced by Lu Bei to live in Jingzhou, and then surrendered to Sun Wu due to Guan Yu's carelessness. It's too much of a pussy. Throughout history, there have been only a handful of such losers. Having died a wimpy death in his last life, he actually had to live a wimpy life in this one. No. I can't just sit around and wait. The mistakes of history must not be repeated. I'm going to take my destiny into my own hands. Wake up and hold the power of the world drunk on the knees of a beautiful woman. Power, beauty, I want it all. As a traveler, I can't just sit back and wait. The more ambitious the goal, the higher the demand on oneself naturally. Lu Zheng's position on himself is that of an ordinary, to the extreme commoner. Trying to unify the chaotic world with the existing capabilities is simply delusional. But he was confident, because anyone who traveled through the world was bound to come with a golden finger. The system also makes Lu Zhang look over his shoulder. Every day, I fantasize about the glorious scene where I dominate the world and cross the sands ideals are plentiful, but reality is bony. Slowly Lu Zhang realized that everything is a dream. It's been three years and Lu Zhang has waited for nothing, he's resigned himself to his fate. He didn't have the golden finger of a traveler, everything was up to him. It's a good thing he's very familiar with where history is going, and it's a good thing it's not too late. It is just now 171 A. D. And his father, Lu Yan, is holding the post of governor of Nanyang. Young master, young master. A sharp cry interrupted Lu Zhang as the little maid went and returned. Take it easy. Take a breath and speak slowly. The little maid ignored Lu Zhang and shouted while panting very anxiously. Young. Master. Quick. Come with me. Go. Front. Hey hey hey, put me down first. What is it? 
The maid didn't care that Lu Zhang was making a fuss and picked him up and ran towards the front Lu Yan, at this time, was receiving a big shot. Z General. Why didn't you tell me when you came to Nanyang, so I could receive you? Lu Yan looked at the youth in front of him with a smile on his face, not daring to slack off in the slightest. Lord Lu is polite, I am a white man, how dare I trouble you? Lu Yan's face was unhappy, and he said with some annoyance. Why is Z General so formal, you and I can just call each other brothers? The youth couldn't push back, so he had to answer the order. At this time, the maid also carried Lu Zhang to the lobby. Lu Zhang was slightly dismayed as he watched his father and the young scribe refer to each other as brothers and sisters, even fawning a bit. Lu Yan is at least a county governor, a disciple of the great scholar Zhu Tian, how can he be so poised? Lu Yan received Lu Zhang from the maid and said to the youth, with a smile on his face. Sun Will, I have four sons, all of whom are here today. With that, he beckoned to the rear and three men came forward. This is the famous scholar of Runan, Su Xiao Suzi General, come and pay your respects. Upon hearing Lu Yan's command, the three sons rushed forward and bowed. Greetings, Uncle Su. Lu Zhang was shocked in his heart, so it was him. The great spitfire of the end of the Han dynasty, no wonder my father didn't dare to neglect him. Not to mention Lu Yan, a county governor, is the Luoyang dignitaries do not dare to easily offend Su Xiao. Lu Zhang, who was in Lu Yan's arms, also followed his brother's example and curtsied. The voice was milky and very cute. No salutations, no salutations. Although Su Xiao was famous, he was not yet at the age of majority Lu Yan laughed and asked. The son will be able to judge the characters, I wonder if he can take a look at these four sons of mine. Su Xiao nodded slightly and looked at Lu Zhang's three older brothers and asked. Do you three know me? The three shook their heads, indicating that they did not know. How are the three of you doing academically? What are your future aspirations? The three just looked at each other and didn't answer. Lu Yan was very annoyed and glared at his eldest son. How come these three sons are so unimpressive? The eldest son, Lu Fan, was so frightened by his father's glare that he almost fell to his knees. Su Xiao shook his head in disappointment, it seemed that Lu Yan's three sons had little talent. Lu Yan saw Su Xiao shaking his head and already knew it, and didn't have the heart to ask again. When the atmosphere suddenly froze, Lu Zhang in his arms suddenly spoke Uncle Su's monthly review is greatly admired by the boy. Oh? Su Xiao looked with some surprise at Lu Zhang, the child he had already ignored. Chapter 2, Suck Up Lu Yan looked at his youngest son in his arms and asked with a slight look. Jang Er, do you know the Moon Day Review? Lu Zhang nodded his head vigorously and milked his compliments. The Lunar Review is famous, my child knows it. Su Xiao laughed, he felt sure that Lu Yan had taught him in advance, so he deliberately asked. Since you know me, can you judge me? Eh, how can I let this child judge such a great talent as Zi Gong? Lu Yan was startled at the sound of this and quickly waved his hand in rejection. If Lu Zhang offends Su Xiao with his mouth, then Lu Yan will be in bad luck. Who in the world doesn't know how poisonous Su Xiao's mouth is? Even the dignitaries of Luo Yang, the capital, had to pay attention to Su Xiao's commentary looking at the flustered Lu Yan. Su Xiao is even more certain that what Lu Zhang said just now was authorized by Lu Yan, and in his heart he cannot help but feel contempt. The boy is shallow and uneducated, how can he dare to comment on Uncle Su? But the kid composes two lines of poetry that he feels are very suitable for Uncle Su. Lu Zhang's words directly stunned the crowd present. Lu Yan, in particular, was so anxious that he was sweating profusely and glaring angrily at Lu Zhang. How dare you babble, you child? What poetry can you make? Brother Lu do not be in a hurry, I am a bit curious, please give me a poem, your excellency. Su Xiao stopped the fuming Lu Yan and looked at Lu Zhang with a smile on his face, waiting for his next words. I don't dare, the kid creates randomly, I still hope Uncle Su will teach me. Go ahead. Lu Zhang's eyes cleared and gazed at Su Xiao and said in a loud voice. 
The world is cloudy, but I am clear, and everyone is drunk. Kid thinks this poem matches Uncle Sue perfectly. Lu Zhang looked at Su Xiao's stunned expression and patted his ass again. This. All the world is muddy, and I'm alone, all the people are drunk, and I'm alone. Did you really do this? Su Xiao's tone was trembling a little, his eyes looked at Lu Yan again, he couldn't believe that this was written by a three-year-old child. But to his disappointment, the surprise in Lu Yan's eyes was no less than Su Xiao's, but even more shocking. After a long time, Su Xiao, who had regained his senses, arched his hand and saluted Lu Zhang. I'm too shallow to be praised by your excellency. Su Xiao is as thick-skinned as he is, he wouldn't dare to call himself by this poem, after all, he is not yet in his prime. Lu Zhang patted Lu Yan's arm, signaling him to put himself down but, there was no response even after half a day of patting. Father, please put me down. Lu Yan was obviously still in shock and only reacted when he heard Lu Zhang call out to himself. The three-year-old Lu Zhang was very short, he stood straight and bowed down towards Su Xiao, with an arch. Uncle Su, is no need to be modest. Who in the world doesn't know Uncle Su's talent? Who in the world would not be convinced of his noble character? Lu Yan looked at the ass-kissing son dumbfounded, Su Xiao has talent is just that, where does the noble character start? How can a three-year-old be so good at kissing ass? Lu Yan shifted his gaze to his three sons next to him, greatly disappointed. They're both your own children, how come there's such a big difference? Su Xiao was complimented by Lu Zhang with a smile at the corner of his mouth, his face was slightly red, his chest was constantly rising and falling, and even his hands were trembling slightly maybe that's how the world sees me. Su Xiao couldn't help but think in his mind. Ahem. After a long time, Su Xiao woke up from his imagination and coughed dryly to hide his embarrassment. Xian Nephew, I've never heard of this seven-character poem, is it Xian Nephew's own creation? Not bad, it is exactly what the kid created. Please ask Uncle Su for guidance. Su Xiao looked at Lu Zhang, who was calm and clear-eyed, and was no longer skeptical. A three-year-old child who lied would not be able to be so calm and would surely reveal the cracks. Xian nephew great talent, Su Xiao admire. I wonder what your nephew's aspirations are. Lu Zhang took a deep breath, knowing that the opportunity to make a name for himself had come in his heart, he silently said sorry to Zhu Liang. It's not temperance that makes a difference, it's not tranquility that makes a difference. This? This? Su Xiao's mouth gradually opened wide, he was already too surprised to speak. Are those really the words of a three-year-old? What's the point of being thirty, let alone three? Even he, Su Gung, couldn't look at fame and fortune so lightly and couldn't say such grandiose words. Su Xiao stared at Lu Zhang for a long time and shifted his gaze to Lu Yan, who he preferred to believe had taught him. Lu Yan's mind is blank at the moment, who am I? Where am I? Who is Lu Zhang? That's not true. Lu Zhang is my son, my Lu Yan son. Lu Yan asked in a trembling tone as he picked up his son in surprise. Jang Er, is this your own idea? Did someone teach you? Of course not, that's what I borrowed of course Lu Zhang did not dare to say so, but just said calmly. This is what is in my child's heart, not what others have taught me. Lu Yan laughed out loud and kept nodding his head to Lu Zhang, his mouth still chanting good good good. Sun General, how is this son of mine? Su Xiao looked at Lu Yan's complacent appearance and did not feel the slightest bit of resentment. It's just too good. A true prodigy too. Rarely seen in the world. This son will be a capable ruler of the world in the future. Su Xiao's words went viral, and Lu Zhang's reputation rose as a result. No one in the whole of Nanyang knows about it. There are four major inherited families in Jingzhou, namely, the Kai clan, Kuai clan, Peng clan, and Huang clan. Huang's origin in Huang Xiang, once the world is unrivaled, Jiangxia Huang Xiang reputation, his son Huang Qiong, grandson Huang Wan are saying officer to the lieutenant, Huang's this fortune, entrenched in Jiangxia County by now, the Huang clan was the most prosperous lineage in Jingzhou with the family prospering and its power spreading throughout Jingzhou. 
Of course, the Huang clan had many sons and daughters with intricate roots and branches, and there were more and more collateral clansmen. There was no lack of mediocre and poor among them. At this time, the Huang family was rooted in Xiling County, the seat of Jiangsha County. Outside the yellow mansion, there was a man kneeling. Hansheng, go back. The head of the family said that your family's business has nothing to do with the Jiangsha Huang clan. An old man was persuading the man kneeling on the ground, sighing incessantly. Butler, tell the family head again, as long as I can save my child, Huang Zhong would do anything to be an ox or a horse. The old man shook his head and sighed as he watched Huang Zhong's tearful plea since your grandfather broke with the family, the clan has expelled your branch from the genealogy. Go back, you're just going to die here on your knees for nothing. Take my advice, go back and think of something else. The old man sighed again and turned around to head towards the mansion, leaving Huang Zhong alone, kneeling outside the door. Huang Zhong's eyes changed from pleading, to disappointment, and finally to resentment. Why? We're both descendants of Huang Xiang, why do you want to save us from death? Huang Zhong is so hateful, hating Huang, for being so heartless. Huang Zhong slowly stood up, his eyes red as he looked at Huang's mansion. From now on, I'll make a clean break with you Wangs. Huang Zhong no longer hesitated and turned around Nanyang County, County Governor's Office. Nanyang Taisho Lu Yen receives the decree. I, Lu Yen, accept the decree. Lu Yen respectfully knelt in front of the eunuch and bowed to the ground with both hands. Lu Yen, a member of the Han family, has been meritorious in governing Nanyang. Today, I am promoting you to the position of assassin of Jizhou, and you will take up your duties on the same day. I, Lu Yen, accept the decree and thank you for the favor. Lu Yen once again bowed and received the imperial decree with both hands. Assassin Lu, His Majesty asked me to give you a message, do not fail His Majesty. I will not fail Your Majesty. The eunuch looked at the obsequious Lu Yen with a smile on his face. Congratulations to Assassin Lu on his high promotion. Lu Yen didn't dare to offend the person in front of him and quickly thanked him many thanks, my lord, ha ha ha. Your honor, please rest inside the house, I have prepared a small gift, I hope your honor will smile. Once Lu Yen said this, the eunuch was even more delighted and thanked him repeatedly. My lord, I have official business to arrange, so I will not accompany you. There's no need for assassin Lu to be polite. Lu Yen arranged the eunuchs and walked straight to Lu Zhang's house. Zhang'er, Zhang'er. Lu Zhang is reading in the house at the moment, and when he is concentrating on the sound of Lu Yan's call, he rushes to get up and open the door. Father, what is it? Looking at his smiling father, Lu Zhang was a bit puzzled as to what had made him so happy. Zhang'er, today is another big day. And guess why my father is overjoyed? Lu Zhang's eyes rolled and his brain worked at a rapid pace he remembered that Lu Yan had served as Nanyang Taishou, Jizhou's assassin, then transferred to Zhongxing, and finally took over as Ijo's pastor. Could it be? But father was promoted? Huh? How do you know? Looking at Lu Yan's surprised expression, Lu Zhang smiled slightly in his heart. This is the power of knowledge. But on his mouth, he did not dare to say so. My son made a wild guess, could it be wrong? My son truly deserves the name of prodigy. Lu Yan was pleasantly surprised, since Su Xiao assessed Lu Zhang, good things have come one after another. Since Lu Bang established the Han dynasty, it has been nearly 400 years since then and there are countless descendants of the Lu clan. Emperor Wu's decree of grace has made most of the Han clansmen fall into obscurity. Lu Bei, for example, now makes a living by weaving mats and peddling shoes now Lu Yan has been promoted to the position of assassin of Jizhou, and Lu Zhang has been recognized by Su Xiao as a child prodigy and a capable ruler of the world. If nothing else, King Lu's lineage will be revitalized once again. Where is father transferred? When will he take office? My father has been transferred to the position of assassin of Hebei. He will raise his family to go there in a few days. Father, my child has a favor to ask, I wonder if father will grant it. But there's no harm in saying it. 
Lu Zhang leaned over and mumbled a few words in Lu Yan's ear, hearing Lu Yan, somewhat startled. It's fine for my father to serve as the governor of Nanyang, but now that he's been transferred to Jizhou, I'm afraid it won't be easy. Father, let's put it this way, I'll go forward on my own. Whether it succeeds or fails, it all depends on God's will. Looking at Lu Yan in a difficult situation, Lu Zhang could only step in himself, all right, I'll transfer the guards in the mansion to you. Do not venture out of the city. Thank you, Father Sama. Chapter 3, The Shining Jingzhou, Nanyang County Huang Zhong stood in front of his house, his hand hanging in mid-air, never pushing the door in. This trip to Jiangxia not only did not get the help of the clan, but also cut off from the Huang clan. How can he face his wife? Just as Huang Zhong felt guilty, the door was opened from the inside. Husband, you're back. Huang Zhong's wife, Zhang, was beaming when she saw Huang Zhong return. Mrs. Husband, how about this trip to Jiangxia? Is the patriarch willing to help us? Looking at his wife's expectant look, Huang Zhong blamed himself even more. Why did he say irretrievably harsh things on the spur of the moment? Hey! Huang Zhong sighed and shook his head in loss. He didn't even dare to look his wife in the eyes. Husband has had a hard journey, go inside first and rest. Instead of blaming him, his wife looked at him with great pain. I have no regrets in my life if I have this wife. I will try to find the money, ma'am. Never let our child die young. Huang Zhong pushed away his wife, who was already in tears, and resolutely turned away. Young master. I found out, the person you're looking for is working as a county soldier in Wanching. What? I told you guys to ask before, didn't I say no? Young master, that man from before went to visit his family and has only just returned. Great. Lu Zhang was overjoyed in his heart. It will soon be far away from Jizhou, and it would be too much of a shame to lose touch with this great general. Quick, take me forward. It's the young master. Lu Zhang, led by his guards, hurried to the county soldiers' tent Lu Yan's county governor's residence was in the center of the city, while the barracks were in the corner of the city wall. Lu Zhang refused to let anyone hold him and walked for half an hour before arriving at the barracks. The journey was unimpeded, and just as he was about to enter the main tent, he heard a brawl inside. My lord, I have been traveling day and night without rest. All right, it was agreed before that it was the hour of the day and look what hour it is now. You will be fined half a month's salary, will you serve? What? It is Huang Zhong, who has passed the door of his house, who is now being made difficult by the pun of Bing Chao. My lord. I'm really in dire need of money, please be gracious, my lord. Huang Zhong bent down and bowed, his tone anxious the family is already unable to make ends meet, and if they are further penalized, the sky will really fall. The pun of the soldier slammed the table and stood up. Huang Zhong. I didn't bother with you before on account of you being a member of the Huang clan. Now that you've been removed from the Huang clan. How dare you be reckless. Stand down. Huang Zhong straightened up and looked angrily at the pun pun. The pun of Bing Chao laughed coldly again and again. In his heart, he cried out in pain. You guys used to frequently go against me based on your status as a son of the Huang clan. Now that you've been removed from the Huang clan, let's see how I'll deal with you in the future. Huang Zhong woke up to the fact that everything was the work of the Huang family. His own bravado had completely angered the Huang clan chief it was just as well that they didn't come to their aid, but now they were going to force themselves to die. Huang Zhong hated so much, hated himself for being intentional hated them for not caring about the friendship of the same clan. Why show off? Why provoke them? Jesus Christ, can't you give Huang Zhong a way out? That. Can I interrupt? A childish voice interrupted the duo in the tent. Bing Chao Pyun looked at it, but it was actually a child, and was furious. How can you let children wander into a place that is a military camp? Someone, throw me out. Before Lu Zhang could speak, the guard next to him became angry. How dare you? This is Lord Lu Yan's son. 
How dare you, a little pun soldier, be so rude? The pun of the military pun was shocked in his heart and snapped out of it. How can an ordinary child walk here? Hurry up and get on your knees and beg for mercy, your excellency forgive me. I'm confused by this guy's anger. Please don't blame me, your excellency. The pun pun of the soldiers had a snotty nose and a tearful face, as if they had a great deal of grievances. Flattering the villain. Lu Zhang secretly despised in his heart, but on his mouth he said lightly. Please rise, my lord, Lu Zhang is but an ordinary man, and cannot afford such a great gift from your lordship. Your excellency is a prodigy of the world, how could he be an ordinary person? I thank you, your excellency. The pin of the soldiers went down the slope and stood up, still thanking him again and again. Lu Zhang looked at Huang Zhong and his eyes lit up. This Huang Zhong was eight feet tall, with a tiger's back and a bear's waist. Especially a pair of arms, unusually thick. The name is true to its reputation. It's really something. My lord, who is this? Lu Zhang pointed at Huang Zhong, pretending not to know being Chao Pun Si Lu Zhang does not recognize Huang Zhong, immediately assured, began to add oil and vinegar to denigration. Your Excellency, this fellow is called Huang Zhong, who previously boasted of being a member of the Huang clan in Jiangxia, and has repeatedly made things difficult for my officials. Word has come from Jiangxia that Huang Zhong has nothing to do with the Huang clan in Jiangxia. If you do not return at the appointed time this time, the next official will mete out punishment according to the law. But this guy is not convinced, and he was still arguing with the subordinate before. Huang Zhong heard the big rush, how dare this guy invert black and white. He was about to open his mouth to refute. Lu Zhang raised his hand to stop Huang Zhong and looked at Bing Chao Pun Road. Can your excellency give me face? Let Huang Zhong take another day off. This. Bing Chao Pun would like to refuse, but Lu Zhang's smiling eyes make his heart tremble and he does not dare to disobey. It's all up to your excellency. Huang Zhong, why don't you thank your excellency? Huang Zhong gratefully glanced at Lu Zhang and bent down to bow. Little man thanks Mr. Lu for his great favor. Lu Zhang wanted to help Huang Zhong up, but he was limited in height. He could only nod at Huang Zhong. Strong man, Huang, please follow me. Said no longer pay attention to Bing Chao Pun, with Huang Zhong left the barracks. Chapter 4 Huang Zhong's Miserable Life Drunken Immortal Pavilion, the biggest and best restaurant in Wancheng. The wine and food are known far and wide, and it is rumored that the word drunken immortal was given by Lu Xiao, the Guangwu Emperor himself Lu Zhang brought his guards and Huang Zhong to the entrance of the drunken immortal pavilion. What's wrong, Mr. Huang? Huang Zhong's face was red with embarrassment. Mr. Lu's great kindness, Huang Zhong should have invited Mr. Lu to dinner. But Huang Zhong's family is so poor that he really can't thank His Excellency here. Lu Zhang slapped his head and shook his head with a smile. You worry too much, today is on me. I don't dare to let Your Excellency break the bank. If Your Excellency has any orders, you can tell Huang Zhong directly. I'll let you come in with me now. Lu Zhang also stopped paying attention to Huang Zhong and took the lead to walk in. Huang Zhong gave Lu Zhang a complicated look and followed suit. The two of them found a private room, and Lu Zhang arranged his guards to wait outside, he wanted to talk to Huang Zhong alone, Lu Zhang is too young to drink wine, so I'll replace the wine with tea today. Strong man, Huang, please. Lu Zhang held up a small cup, Huang Zhong lifted his wine cup, and both of them drank it down. Rumor has it that Duke Lu is incredibly talented and wise, a rarity in the ages. Indeed, the name is true. You're welcome, I wonder if strongman Huang has a hard time. Huang Zhong had a million bitterness in his heart at the moment and was very eager to find someone to talk to. The boss's bullying, Huang's difficulties, his wife's expectations, and his child's condition all weigh Huang Zhong down. Thinking of his miserable situation, Huang Zhong couldn't help but let his eyes turn red. Hey! Also not afraid of Gongzi joke. 
Huang Zhong confided his ordeal to Lu Zhang. It turned out that Huang Zhong and Jiangxia Huang clan came from the same source, but from Huang Zhong's grandfather's generation left Jiangxia and came to Nanyang Huang Zhong's grandfather, his father never interacted with the Jiangxia lineage again, nor did he ever mention the grudge between their lineage and the Huang clan of Jiangxia. Huang Zhong's parents died early and relied on his wife Zhang's family for relief. Huang Zhong also got along with Zhang since childhood, and they were childhood sweethearts. After being married, they had a son, Huang Su. Nay, Zhang's body was weak, and after giving birth to a son for Huang Zhong, she could not add to the Huang family. Instead of inheriting Huang Zhong's strong physique, Huang Su was very thin and weak like his mother, and had been sickly since childhood. Mr. and Mrs. Huang Zhong dispersed their family's wealth and barely managed to keep Huang Su alive until now. If Huang Su wanted to stay alive, he had to have a lot of money. Pointing to Huang Zhong's salary as a county soldier was far from enough Huang Zhong could only go to Jiangxia and pray for Huang's help for the sake of his fellow clansmen. Oi. Things went against my wishes. I was impulsive and offended Huang instead. Looking at Huang Zhong, this kind of iron-blooded man in tears, Lu Zhang was very moved. It's hard to beat a hero, for a penny. Huang Zhong is really too difficult. Maybe a thousand people and ten thousand people couldn't make him Huang Zhong bow his high and proud head. But now he had to bow his head to the yellow and white. Is there no cure for Huang Su's disease? Huang Zhong sighed and wiped away his tears. Lord Zhang Ji once gave me a party that made me even more desperate. What formula? The other herbs in this formula are fine, it's just that one of them requires a 10,000-year-old ginseng. What? 10,000 years? Lu Zhang stared his little eyes wide, what is the concept of 10,000 years? How many years of human history has it been until now? Not to mention whether there is such a ginseng, even if there is, can it be Huang Su's turn? This pretty much condemns Huang Su to death Lu Zhang's reaction made Huang Zhong even more disheartened. A divine object that shocked even the sons of great clans, could a commoner like him even touch it? Strong man Huang, 10,000-year-old ginseng is too appalling. Is there no other way? Nowadays, it can only barely survive with the replacement of a hundred years of ginseng. A hundred years. Lu Zhang muttered that even a hundred years of ginseng was a rare thing. What are strongman Huang's future plans? I'm afraid the revenue from the county soldiers is far from enough. Huang Zhong lowered his head and didn't say anything yes, the meager income of the county soldiers could barely keep the couple alive, so how could they treat Huang Su? If he wasn't truly desperate, would he have been able to kneel in front of Huang's door? Lu Zhang saw that Huang Zhong had been pushed to the brink and knew that the opportunity to recruit him had come. Strong man, Huang has great skills, wouldn't it be a waste of time to be a pawn? Although I, Lu Zhang, am young, I have a big heart, and I greatly admire a loyal and righteous man like Strong Huang. If strong man Huang is willing to follow me, I will bear the expenses for Huang Su's treatment in the future. Huang Zhong's eyes lit up as he opened his mouth to ask. What did your excellency ask Huang to do? Follow me for life and do my bidding. And my father has been transferred to the position of Jizhou assassin, and his family will be traveling to Jizhou in three days. Huang Zhong's brow furrowed and his complexion darkened. Lu Zhang is asking Huang Zhong to sell himself to him. Huang Zhong had the high pride of the worldly family in his bones, so he could not agree. I am grateful for your kindness, sir. Although Huang Zhong has been removed from the Huang clan, he still has the blood of his lineage flowing through his veins, how can he be given a guardian? Huang Zhong can't agree to this, I hope your honor will forgive me. Lu Zhang was not annoyed by Huang Zhong's refusal, he just walked over to Huang Zhong and patted his shoulder. Eh. There's no need to rush your reply, you can go back and think about it again. Lu Zhang walked to the door and looked back at Huang Zhong. I have 300-year-old ginsengs in my mansion, and I will gift them to strongman Huang whether he agrees or not. Three days from now, at the hour of the hour, at the east gate of Wanching City, strongman Huang may come and fetch the ginseng. 
saying that, he no longer paid attention to Huang Zhong and turned to leave. Three days pass in a flash, and Lu Yan's family departs for Jizhou. But these three days were exceptionally difficult for Lu Zhang, and he couldn't even quiet his mind. This is the first time Lu Zhang has recruited talent, and it means a lot to him. Eastern Han Dynasty family valves stand, the vast majority of talents are the people of the big families, not easy to recruit. Lu Zhang needs to cherish every talent from the cold, commoners, and even the downtrodden. Jang Er, not feeling well? Mother Fei looked at Lu Zhang with a worried face this child was tied to the revival of the Lu family and had to be taken seriously by her. Thank you, Mother Superior for your concern, my son is fine. Lu Zhang smiled and shook his head, then looked outside, the city gates were already close at hand. Mother Sama, my son has an appointment at the city gates, and will stop at the gates in a moment. Good. The carriage slowed to a stop and Lu Zhang knew that the results would soon be revealed. Taking several deep breaths, Lu Zhang calmed his nervousness and stepped off the carriage. Mr. Lu. Huang Zhong saw Lu Zhang at a glance and led his wife to Lu Zhang. Lu Zhang took a box and handed it to Huang Zhong. Strong man, Huang, here are the 300-year-old ginsengs I promised you, please keep them. Huang Zhong trembled as he took it, his heart overwhelmed with emotion. Although Lu Zhang was young, he kept his promise and did not ask in the least whether he would follow Han Xing. Zhang softly called out to the dazed Huang Zhong, then nodded slightly. Huang Zhong made a decision right away and fell on one knee in front of Lu Zhang. Huang Zhong's life will be your son's from now on. Please save my son's life. Zhang brought Huang Su to kneel down together as well. Strong man, Huang, misses. Huang please rise. Although Lu Zhang is young, he knows that a gentleman's word is his bond. I will be responsible for Huang Su's illness, to the end. The huge stone weighing on Lu Zhang's heart finally fell. Accepting Huang Zhong, a great general, allowed him to take a solid step on the road to hegemony. Zhang Er, this is? Lu Yan saw three people kneeling in front of Lu Zhang and rushed over. Lord Father, this is my newest guard, Huang Zhong. This is his family. Lu Zhang's tone was very agitated, and he had not yet suppressed his excitement. Greetings, Lord Lu. Huang Zhong's family hurriedly saluted Lu Yan, the Jizhou assassin was no different from an emperor to a commoner like them. Well, protect my son from now on. Lu Yan did not pay much attention to Huang Zhong, in his opinion, Huang Zhong was at most a slightly better guard. Jang Er, hurry up and get on the road. Yes. Father. Chapter 5 The Big Shots Show Up One After Another After more than a month of long-distance traveling, Lu Yan's family finally crossed the Yellow River and set foot on the land of Jizhou. Dayu divided the world into nine states, including Jizhou, and it was the first of the nine states. During the Tu Han Dynasty, the world was redivided into thirteen states and Jizhou remained the most economically and demographically important state. Yuan Shao was able to dominate Hebei with Jizhou. Although the current Jizhou is not the number one state in the world, after the Yellow Turban Rebellion, Jizhou has a hidden trend of being the number one state in the world. Chao Chao, who had pacified the north, then chose Yeqing in Hebei province as his royal capital. Jizhou, Jizhou, the homeland of Yan and Zhao. Hebei is full of righteous men, Yan and Zhao are full of heroes. Along the way, Lu Zhang savored the elegance of Yan Zhao land and could not help but sigh repeatedly. Jang Er, why are there so many sensations? Lu Yan looked at his son with some curiosity, ever since he was born in Nanyang, he had never been to the land of Hebei. Father, there is a saying in the book that Yan Zhao Ga is full of men of generosity and sorrow. My child has traveled all the way here, only to have this lament. Not bad. The land of Yan and Zhao produces many great men, as has been the case since ancient times. But what book has this record? How is it that my father does not know? Lu Yan's query could not help but make Lu Zhang slightly stunned, not knowing how to answer where is it from? It's from Han Yu's preface to Dong Xiaonan. I can't tell you. Ahem. 
Lu Zhang dryly coughed twice to hide his embarrassment, then shook his head aloud like the great scholar. The book is in the book, the book is in the book. Heh. Is this kid a god? He's got a poem on his lips? Lu Yan looked at Lu Zhang with a strange expression. Zhang Er, this golden house is known to my father. But what is this Yan Ryu? Lu Zhang shook his head, helplessly, secretly blaming himself for talking too much. Father, Yan Ryu describes a woman as very beautiful. Lu Yan let out an oh-so-quiet sound and asked again. Then why name it after Yan Ryu? Are you a hundred thousand reasons? Lu Zhang looked at his father with some annoyance, and said in a serious tone. The sea of learning is endless. Father still needs to learn more. Heh, you kid. Lu Yan looked at Lu Zhang's elder-like demeanor and gasped and laughed just then, the sound of a guard came from outside. Lord Lu, there is some situation ahead. More than a dozen men surrounded a wagon. Go and see, what is it? Nah. As soon as the words fell, Lu Zhang slipped out of the carriage. Zhang Er, come back quickly. Don't run around. Father Sama, I'll go and see and return. Lu Yan was anxious to see this, and could not wait for the guards to come back from their prying, and went after Lu Zhang. Lu Zhang is not stupid, seeing the number of people in front of him, he has already called Huang Zhong to follow with Huang Zhong by his side, safety was not a problem. Just as the guard said, more than ten strong men were surrounding a middle-aged man and a carriage. Lord Kai, I admire you very much. That's why I personally come to invite you, won't you honor me with your presence? Thank you for inviting me, but I have been ordered to the border and do not dare to delay. I hope you'll pardon me. Lord Kai, I'm so sincere, and your honor still doesn't give face to. Son? It's not that the old man doesn't give face, it's really that the holy order is difficult. Please don't blame me. You. As the man in charge was about to get angry, he suddenly saw many soldiers rushing towards this. Master, what to do? The crowd was a little panicked when they saw the officers. Don't panic. It's not like we did anything. It didn't take long for Lu Zhang to arrive at the front Lu Yan was also close behind. Brother Harmony? Lu Yan shouted ahead in surprise. Jun Rao? Why are you here? The surrounded middle-aged man was also very surprised, and turned to great joy. Brother Harmony, what's going on? Seeing that the situation was not right, Lu Yan had already told his guards to all press on and prepare for battle. The atmosphere was tense for a moment, but this eerie harmony was still in the crowd, and would not be spared in the event of an engagement. The man at the head of the group saluted Lu Yan and said, My lord, I, Zhang Jiao of the Taiping Dao, admire Lord Kai Yong, so I would like to invite Lord Kai to a meeting. What? Zhang Jiao? Lu Zhang, archaic. A gasp of surprise caught everyone's attention. Lu Zhang did not feel the slightest bit of attention, and then looked at Kai Yong again. Kai Yong. Kai the Great Scholar. Founder of the Fei Bai Style. Library of the Late Han Dynasty. Lu Zhang was shocked in his heart, what happened today? Not only did he meet Zhang Jiao, but he also met Kai Yong. Zhang Er, you know this person? Lu Yan, doubtfully looked at Lu Zhang, this three-year-old child still knows the people of Hebei? Do not recognize. Do not recognize. Lu Zhang hurriedly shook his head, he couldn't get involved with the rebels Lu Yan nodded slightly, then looked at Zhang Jiao with a hard look in his eyes. Jun Lang, forget it, they're on the receiving end too. Zhang Jiao was very surprised, he thought there would be a vicious battle, but he did not expect Kai Yong to intercede for himself. Since Lord Kai is unwilling to have a chat, Zhang Jiao wouldn't dare to force himself. Farewell. Zhang Jiao, who was far away, suddenly turned back and looked at Lu Zhang, realizing that the latter was also looking at himself. Zhang Jiao smiled faintly, no longer staying, gradually disappearing in Lu Zhang's eyes. Chapter 6 Making Exhortation Poems Again Zhang Er, come and pay your respects to your Uncle Kai. Your Uncle Kai is a famous scholar, not an idle one. Lu Yan hurriedly greeted Lu Zhang. 
Kai Yong is a great scholar of the world, and if he can worship under him, it will be of great benefit to Lu Zhang. Lu Zhang himself is even more aware of this, and jogged all the way to Kai Yong, bowing and saluting. Kid Lu Zhang, greet Uncle Kai. Well, good. Kai Yong smiled and nodded, looking at Lu Yan and praising him. Rumor has it that Xian nephew is a prodigy that is hard to come by in a hundred years, and when I see him today, his name is indeed true. Lu Yan was very pleased in his heart, but he humbly waved his hand, he's just a little smart, where does he call himself a prodigy? It's still a hundred years in the making. Eh, what Su Zi will assess is not a false statement. I heard that your nephew pioneered the seven-character poem? Kai Yong looked at Lu Zhang kindly, he was also very appreciative of Lu Zhang's talent, and took this opportunity to see for himself. Lu Zhang first bowed his hand and then said. Su Xiao asked the boy to evaluate a fan, the kid does not dare to offend, so he returns with the world is all cloudy and I am alone clear, all people are drunk and I am alone awake. Su Xiao asked the kid about his aspirations, and the kid replied, there is no way to be clear about one's aspirations unless one is indifferent, and there is no way to be farsighted unless one is serene. Kai Yong was also shocked by these two lines of poetry for a long time before he murmured. Your nephew is a great talent, worthy of the name of prodigy. Ha ha ha, brother Bo Harmony, don't praise him. Just now he was educating me on books are like jade, books are like gold. I asked him what a face is, but he told me that there is no end to learning and that I still need to learn more. This kid. No big deal. Kai Yong watched Lu Yan angrily yell at Lu Zhang and shook his head helplessly. Lu Yan looks like he is blaming Lu Zhang, but in reality, his eyes are full of pride. It is nothing more than showing off Lu Zhang's talent to himself. Xian nephew, are these two verses incomplete? Is there any more to come? Not bad, yet it follows. Lu Zhang admiringly glanced at Kai Yong, worthy of being a great scholar. Even if he hasn't been exposed to seven character poems. But a quick glance showed there was more to come. Can your nephew enlighten me? I don't dare to, but I'd like to ask Uncle Kai for guidance. A rich family doesn't need to buy a good field, a book has a thousand bells of corn. There is no need to set up a high hall to live in peace, there is a golden house in a book. Don't go out and hate that no one is with you, there are as many carriages as clusters in the book. Marry a wife without a good matchmaker, the book has a face like a jade. If a man wants to fulfill his ambition in life, he should read the six classics diligently in front of the window. Great poem. May I have a name? Kai Yong asked hastily. This poem is called, Poem of Persuasion. Kai Yong read it twice more silently, and then sighed, Sien nephew this poem of exhortation is really a work of no one before. It's a pity that. Ai. Lu Yan was very excited that Lu Zhang had shown his talent again, but Kai Yong's sentence of pity made him very puzzled. Why is it a pity, Brother Harmony? Kai Yong shook his head helplessly and sighed a few times. Though the poem of exhortation is good, is it not a pity that the people have no books to learn? Lu Yan gave Kai Yong a strange look. Displeased in his heart. What kind of books does this people read? Lu Zhang looked at Kai Yong with admiration and asked. Uncle Kai, can't the people read? Kai Yong shook his head and looked at Lu Zhang. The people have problems feeding themselves, so how can they afford to buy books? Let alone read books. Lu Yan saw that the atmosphere was very depressing and hurriedly changed the topic why is Brother Harmony here? The old man offended Sita Lu Ha and almost died in prison. Luckily, Zhong Changsha Lu Chang pleaded on my behalf and saved me from death. Now I am exiled by His Majesty to Shuafang. I did not think that Lu Ha would yet refuse to let go of the old man, and that Zhang Jiao should have been authorized by him to pursue him all this way. Luckily, Jun Lang appeared and saved my family's lives. Madam, bring DM out, it's all right. Kai Yong shouted into the carriage and a woman let a child out. Lu Zhang looked directly at the little girl, his eyes straightening. Big. The large eyes are set with two black pearl-like eyes, 
and the two willow leaf eyebrows are thin and it was long, and the white skin set off the delicate features like a shapely elf. Cayenne. It's actually Cayenne. So cute at such a young age, what's it going to be like when it grows up? Isn't Jun Lang the governor of Nanyang County? Why are you here? Kai Yang's words interrupted the dazed Lu Zhang, who hurriedly lowered his head the loser's inferiority complex is brought out in Lu Zhang. His majesty transferred me to be the assassin of Jizhou, and that's why I raised my family for the post. I see, congratulations to Jun Lang. Brother Bo Harmony, not far ahead is the ancient city that is the seat of Jizhou, why don't you take a rest for two days, and then hurry up again? Looking at Lu Yan's sincere invitation, Kai Yong was a little embarrassed, he wanted to say yes, but did not dare to say yes. Jun Lang, now that I have offended Lu Ha, I fear that I may cause you trouble. Brother Bo Harmony rest assured, I and Lu Ha are of the same Han family, and have some friendship, I expect he will not harm me. Let's go, Brother Harmony, you and I haven't seen each other for many years since we parted ways in Luo Yang. In that case, I'm sorry to bother you, brother. Chapter 7, Seven Years in a Flash The seven days flashed by, and Kai Yong had to say goodbye and leave Brother Harmony, will you really not stay a few more days? Lu Yan pulled Kai Yong's hand, very reluctant. Kai Yong was very moved and looked at Lu Yan with red eyes. Jun Lang's good intentions, my humble brother appreciates it. It's just that the holy orders are hard to fulfill, and I don't want to drag Shanbi into it. Lu Zhang walked forward and bowed to Kai Yong. Uncle Kai, thank you for your teachings over the past few days. Lu Zhang is grateful. Kai Yong was very reluctant to leave, not coveting the life in Jizhou, but very reluctant to let go of Lu Zhang in just seven days together. Lu Zhang's talent made Kai Yong very shocked. Lu Zhang's talent is far from being comparable to that of any other person, and is not at all like that of a three-year-old child. Even if talent doesn't explain a person, character definitely does. Three-year-old Lu Zhang is humble and courteous, and already has the demeanor of a gentleman. Xian nephew, you are gifted and intelligent, a rarity in the world. I had wanted to take you as a disciple and pass on my mantle. Ai. It's a pity that I've made too many enemies and have been sent to Shuafang again. Kai Yong's reluctance has been written on his face, Lu Zhang was very moved. Uncle Kai, I. Well, there's no need for words, I'll leave you with my entire existing collection, don't let me down. Uncle Kai. Lu Zhang could no longer restrain his emotions and burst into tears. Kai Yong leaned over and patted Lu Zhang's shoulder, then glanced at Kai Yan reluctantly. Jun Lang, DM is counting on you. Lu Yan was already sad, and when stimulated by Lu Zhang, his eyes suddenly turned red. Don't worry, Mr. Bo Harmony, DM will be my daughter in the future. Kai Yong nodded heavily and arched his hand to say goodbye. A great favor is not appreciated. Jun Lang, take care. Lu Yan similarly arched his hand in farewell. Brother Harmony, take care of yourself. Kai Yong, no longer hesitate, pulling the lady who cried into tears, slowly disappeared in the eyes of the crowd. Little Kai Yen was so sad to see her parents leave that she had already cried into tears. Lu Zhang took Kai Yan's small hand and let her lean on his thin shoulder. Brother Lu Zhang, does DM have no parents? Is there no one to love her in the future? Lu Zhang wiped away Kai Yan's tears with his hand and said softly. Don't worry, DM. From now on, my brother will love you and love you. The thin Lu Zhang became unusually tall in Kai Yan's eyes at the moment. Lu Zhang looked at Kai Yan in front of him, and his heart became even more determined to fight for supremacy. I can't waste any more time, I must become stronger. Only if I am strong can I dominate everything. Time flies, and seven years have passed. For Lu Zhang, seven years are like one day and he dares not slack off in the slightest. Strengthening his body from his past life's experience and trying to study the books left behind by Kai Yong. It became Lu Zhang's main daily routine. Of course, teasing Kai Yan was essential. Today's Lu Zhang was ten years old, but he didn't look like a ten-year-old in the slightest. 
The body had grown to over six feet and was very strong, with muscles that showed a graceful flow. In the backyard of the assassin's office, Lu Zhang was practicing drawing his bow. Huang Zhong looked at Lu Zhang, who had a headache that far exceeded the physique of normal people, and felt very sorry in his heart. Your son's physical fitness is rare in the world. Why is your talent for martial arts so poor? Even if you put in more effort, I'm afraid it will be difficult to reach the top level. Lu Zhang didn't know what was going through Huang Zhong's mind, right now, all he needed to do was pull the bowstring in his hand full. He clenched his teeth with a grim expression. His trembling arms seemed to warn him that he could not yet master this bow. No, I must draw a full bowstring today, I must be harder on myself. If you can't even do such a simple thing, how can you fight for the world? How to protect? DM. Ah. Lu Zhang roared, he knew very well that the limits of the body needed to be constantly broken through, and only after the breakthrough could he adapt open. Lu Zhang bellowed, and the bowstring was finally drawn into a full moon. Good. Your son's strength is amazing, at the age of ten, he can handle a one-stone strong bow. Huang Zhong gave a respectful congratulations, and was also happy for Lu Zhang. Lu Zhang slowly loosened the bowstring and looked at Huang Zhong with a ashamed face. Han Xing, don't make fun of me, I've trained these muscles for nothing. Although Lu Zhang is strong, he is still inferior to Huang Zhong. Huang Zhong is eight feet tall, elegant, imposing, already a general's posture. Your Excellency should not be presumptuous. Although the martial arts are progressing slowly, your son's strength is far beyond the ordinary and is not comparable to that of an ordinary person. Huang Zhong comforted Lu Zhang more than once, but he could only comfort and console, nothing more Lu Zhang waved his hand, he didn't care how high he practiced his martial arts to. As long as one is not handless. Han Sheng, I'm going to go to Qingzhou, to pursue my studies. Then I'll pack up and escort your excellency forward. No need, the world is still peaceful now. I have another important matter to ask Han Sheng. Still at your service, Your Excellency. Huang Zhong was very grateful to Lu Zhang, without Lu Zhang, his son would have died long ago. It's still disease-ridden, but at least it's alive. Their family can still live together without any worries. Han Sheng, the world is going to be in chaos. Lu Zhang sighed slightly and said something that shocked Huang Zhong. What do you mean, Your Excellency? Lu Zhang did not reply, only shaking his head slightly. Han Xing has excellent shooting skills, I want Han Xing to recruit a hundred strong men to practice shooting. The money will come from the inner government, but the personnel will need to be hand-picked by Han Xing and try to pick people without families. Your Excellency is going to train your soldiers privately? This is a felony. Lu Zhang didn't reply and just gazed at Huang Zhong. Huang Zhong was very hesitant, he came from a soldier's background, and he knew very well what happened to privately practicing soldiers. The Lord Assassin's place? Father then I will speak personally, you need not consider it. In that case, I'll oblige your excellency. Huang Zhong clenched his teeth and agreed. Han Xing, you're the one who has my heart. Lu Zhang gave Huang Zhong a deep look and turned to leave. Chapter 8 Ancient city, Hebei province. Jang Er, what is it that you want to see my father about? Lu Yan was very happy whenever he saw Lu Zhang. This child made him love him from the bottom of his heart. Father, reading 10,000 scrolls is better than traveling 10,000 miles, and my son wishes to study in Beihai under the tutelage of Mr. Xing Xian. Lu Zhang's voice was somewhat childish, but his tone was very firm. Is it better to read a thousand books than to walk a thousand miles? Lu Yan was a bit surprised that Lu Zhang hadn't even shown his talent in years. It's still a little disconcerting to suddenly utter such quotes today. It is also good that he wants to seek to learn from the great scholars. Lu Yan had already agreed in his mind, but his mouth still needed to be concerned. Zhang Er, why do you want to worship Mr. Zheng? Lu Zhang saw his father smile and knew that the matter was mostly fine. Mr. Zheng is a great scholar of the world, and my son greatly admires him. However, it is extremely difficult to worship Mr. 
Xing is a teacher, so I hope that my father will help me. Ha ha ha. Rarely, your boy begs his father for once. Lu Yan's heart is very painful, since recruiting Huang Zhong, Lu Zhang has never begged himself again. For Lu Zhang, Lu Yan is very satisfied. Although not as sharp as when he was a child, Lu Yan has seen all the efforts over the years. This son continues to be better than his peers. Patting Lu Zhang's shoulder, he laughed. My son is diligent and studious, and my father will help him. Mr. Jing resides in the North Sea, and Huang Wan, the assassin of Qingzhou, is a good friend of mine from the same hometown, I'll write to him, and I'll help myself. Thanks, father. Lu Yan nodded, he was worried about Lu Zhang's safety, this is a long way to Qingzhou, so Huang Zhong will escort you. No. Why? Huang Zhong's martial arts, Lu Yan, is clear, and does not understand why Lu Zhang rejected it outright. Father, the Huang clan of Jiangxia is at odds with Huang Zhong. Ah, yes. My father forgot. Lu Yan slapped his head, too much time had passed and this kind of small matter had long since slipped his mind. Besides, my son has other plans for Huang Zhong. Hmm? Lu Yan looked at Lu Zhang with some curiosity. Huang Zhong's archery skills are unrivaled, my child wants him to train some archers. Lu Zhang looked at his father nervously, he wasn't sure how Lu Yan would react. He knew that his father was extremely ambitious, and that he had a lot to do with the fall of the Eastern Han Dynasty but now that the wind has calmed down, Lu Zhang is not sure if Lu Yan will agree. After all, training private soldiers is a felony. How many people did you have him train? It was a long time before Lu Yan opened his mouth to inquire. A hundred will do. Lu Yan narrowed his eyes slightly and gazed at Lu Zhang as if he wanted to see through him. To Lu Yan's disappointment, Lu Zhang's eyes were clear, without any waves. All right. In the name of the house guests, make sure you're careful. Thanks, father. Seeing Lu Yan agree, Lu Zhang's hanging heart finally dropped. Go talk to your mother, she's going to complain about me. Nah. As expected, Lu Yan's mother Fei blamed Lu Yan for all the things Lu Zhang had done while he was away studying. It took a lot of persuasion on Lu Zhang's part to finally convince his mother after coming out of his mother's place, Lu Zhang came to Kai Yan's door. Hey, what to tell, DM sister? Lu Zhang's heart is very difficult, this little girl is simply his soft underbelly. The two have been together for seven years without ever being separated, so they can be considered childhood friends. Just as Lu Zhang was fuming, the door opened. Brother Zhang, why are you standing at the door? A heavenly voice came to Lu Zhang's ears, and he didn't need to look to know who it was. DM, I've just arrived and haven't had a chance to knock. Brother come on in. Kai Yan pulled Lu Zhang and went inside. Kai Yan was now ten years old, and she was only two months younger than Lu Zhang. But it hasn't developed much yet, and is quite a bit shorter than Lu Zhang. Lu Zhang greedily breathed in the aroma of the room, he had always wondered why Kai Yan's room smelled so good. Is something wrong brother? Kai Yan tilted her little head and looked at Lu Zhang with a smile on her face this smile simply melted Lu Zhang's heart, it was too gentle. Thinking of what would happen to Kai Yan in the future, Lu Zhang's heart ached. No. No one can hurt DM. Looking at Lu Zhang's fierce eyes, Kai Yan was slightly frightened. Brother. Lu Zhang woke up and replaced it with a doting smile. DM, can't I come to you if there's nothing wrong? Of course not. DM is afraid of delaying his brother's studies. DM, how about my brother quiz you? Yeah. Looking at Kai Yan's innocent face, Lu Zhang burst into a bad smile. There are so many stars in the sky, who do you think knows how many stars there really are in the sky? Huh? Kai Yan was instantly stumped by the question, frowning and blinking incessantly. Then he pointed his hand vaguely at the sky and mouth numbers. Gee, this is too hard. DM doesn't know. Little twerp, of course the stars in the sky are God knows what. Kai Yan didn't even react, and only after a while did she look at Lu Zhang in exasperation, you're not cheating. Change it for another one. 
Okay, listen up. My brother wants to drink, but he can't drink himself, why? Kai Yan laughed cheerfully. That must be, because Uncle Lu won't let brother drink. No. So the wine is too strong? Brother can't drink it. Not true either. Lu Zhang smiled and shook his head. What's that? Lu Zhang stood up and looked at Kai Yan with a gentle face. The wine my brother wants to drink is a long day with you. Ah. Kai Yan's face instantly turned red and she lowered her head, not daring to look at Lu Zhang. She had long recognized Lu Zhang in her heart, but had never expressed it. Lu Zhang looked at the shy Kai Yan and couldn't hold back any longer, reaching out and taking Kai Yan in his arms, brother, no. Lu Zhang's move startled Kai Yan and she kept struggling. Could Lu Zhang's strength be something she could break free from? Seeing that Lu Zhang was simply hugging himself, he slowly stopped struggling. DM, do you know what I fear most about life? Kai Yan didn't say anything, the thumping of her heartbeat in her ears. DM, I'm most afraid of not having you in my life in the future. Brother. Chapter 9 Departure. Brother, DM will not leave you. Kai Yan also felt Lu Zhang's emotions and instead reached out and wrapped her arms around Lu Zhang. The two of them felt each other's heartbeats like this for a long time, Lu Zhang slowly let go of Kai Yan and gazed at her tenderly. DM, when Uncle Kai returns, I'll have father propose marriage to him. Kai Yan's face was as red as an apple, and she lowered her head and softly mumbled it so beautiful that Lu Zhang can't hold it a little bit again. Biting the tip of his own tongue hard to clear his brain a bit. DM, I'm going to go away to study, maybe for three or four years. Lu Zhang mentioned somewhat sheepishly that he didn't know how Kai Yan would react. But he guessed right, when Kai Yan heard this, her eyes instantly became red and tears ticked down her face. Brother just said he couldn't live without DM, and here he is about to leave and go for so long. Done and done. Lu Zhang, who has been a man for two lifetimes, is also dumbfounded. One Kai Yan can't even fiddle with it, let alone three wives and four concubines. No wonder it is said that heroes are hard to resist. Lu Zhang really had an urge to go nowhere and stay with Kai Yan. After all, reason overcame impulse. If you can't let go of Kai Yan now, you may not be able to protect her in the future, DM. Everything my brother does is for us to be better together. We part for now, for a long time to come. Trust brother, in this life brother will not marry you. If you break this promise, the sky will strike thunder. Kai Yan hurriedly covered Lu Zhang's mouth to prevent him from speaking further. Brother don't talk nonsense, Diem believes just that. Lu Zhang put his arm around Kai Yan, and this time Kai Yan didn't struggle, and directly hugged Lu Zhang backhandedly. Brother, Diem really can't let go of brother. Lu Zhang stroked Kai Yan's long hair and said softly. If two loves last forever, how can it be in the morning and in the evening? Brother is still literate. What if I miss my brother? Lu Zhang laughed out loud, and again, he exited. Thinking of you every day and not seeing you, drinking the Yellow River water together. Kai Yan smiled and looked at Lu Zhang with admiration all over his eyes. Brother's outstanding literary skills are awesome. Lu Zhang's old face reddened, and in his heart, he had already apologized to countless great men. Ahem. DM, be good and wait at home until I return. Okay, I'll wait for my brother. Lu Zhang left with Kai Yan's reluctant eyes, not daring to stay any longer. Kai Yan is too gentle, Lu Zhang is really afraid that he will sink into the gentle land and be unable to extricate himself. On the second day, without informing anyone, Lu Zhang took his guards and headed for Qingzhou. Lu Zhang's trip to Beihai was not all for the sake of education. In ten years, Lu Zhang completely saw the end of the Han dynasty here, there is only a struggle for power and weakness. Civilians? That's the private property of the powerful members of the family, with no rights whatsoever. Lu Zhang doesn't have the system of a traveler, doesn't have the charisma that makes millions of people worship, and has only his own knowledge of history. It's all up to him to work hard and personally create a dynasty of his own. 
From Nanyang to Jizhou, Lu Zhang has gained a clearer understanding of the reasons for the demise of the Han Dynasty. The big families dominate everything here, and Lu is the biggest family. After the family, there are the powerful. The powerful are not recognized by the families, but they are able to oppress the common people. And the commoners can only barely survive, and in order to do so, they can only be exploited by the clans and oppressed by the powerful. In the past few years, the frontier has been plagued by wars and natural disasters, and it has become a luxury for civilians to even stay alive. How can such a country not perish? How can the people not revolt? The most miserable thing is that the civilians will never be able to get ahead, but will only be enslaved and oppressed. Reading? That's for the upper class. Civilians do not have the right to even look at it, let alone read it. I originally thought that with the identity of the traveler, I could easily recruit some great talents and then conquer the four directions after succeeding as the pastor of Ijo. No more than that, you can become a character like Tang Zong and Song Zhu. But reality is a stark slap in the face. Even the downtrodden Huang Zhong is unwilling to follow, if not Huang Su. Thinking of this, Lu Zhang was also very helpless. How can a civilian be talented when he doesn't even have a book? This has led to the fact that capable talents are almost always the children of the world's families of course there are many talents from the cold, but what is the definition of cold? It's the fallen lineage. The status of the humble family is much higher than that of the commoners. This era is very simple, there are books in order to learn, and knowledge in order to raise filial piety and honesty. Being an official and being a vassal is the only way to become a lineage. Regardless of whether they are from the worldly family or the humble family, most of them put their family's interests first. Putting the interests of the family first. Even now, Lu Zhang is the pastor of Ijo, a majestic lord whose civil and military achievements are known to the world, and a patriarch whose goal is to revive the Han family. But recruit Sun Yu, who is in Ingchuan, and he still won't come to serve. It is very simple, Sun Yu is the direct lineage of the Sun family in Ingchuan, and the roots of the Sun family are in Ingchuan the more capable a person is, the more they will put the interests of the clan in front of them. Isn't Zhuge Liang a commoner? He was farming in Longzhong before he met Lu Bei. In fact, Zhuge's and Langya is a real family, because of the disaster, to go to Jingzhou. Zhuge Liang married the daughter of the Huang clan, a large clan in Jingzhou, and Lu Biao, the lord of Jingzhou, was his aunt and Kai Mao was his uncle. Can a civilian get that kind of treatment? While there are always more ways than there are difficulties, slowly, the difficulties always come faster than the ways. It's like a snowball with no solution at all. Sometimes, Lu Zhang will also think, cannot be in line with the trend of the times, to be a Ijo pastor, rich and noble life to get. But can he be happy with that? Not only was there the dignity of a traveler, but now there was a lifelong tie. The sadness of Lu Zhang in history should never be repeated. In the past few years, Lu Zhang had been well read in poetry, and Kai Yong had left him a huge amount of wealth. This age is all about origin, resume, and whose disciple you are. Xingxian disciples are very good business cards of course, Lu Zhang also had selfishness. He was hitting on those disciples of Xingxian. The world family disciples cannot accept, the cold family still cannot fool a few. At the age of 10, Lu Zhang left Kai Yan ruthlessly and decisively went out to pursue his education, which he aimed at the North Sea. For one thing, he could study under Zheng Xian and mix up a good resume. Secondly, Zheng Xian did have a few disciples who were very capable, all of whom were from humble backgrounds. And there is also Lu Zhang's favorite famous general, Taishi Ci. Chapter 10, The Fated Return I didn't steal the car, I bought it in East Lee. The strong man was unusually angry, how could he be an eight-foot man and do the thing of stealing chickens and dogs? The official on the sidelines sneered, now that there are witnesses and material evidence, there is no room for denial. Arrest these two car thieves first, I'm not afraid they won't confess. With that, a few officials were ready to strike. Hold your hand. It was Lu Zhang who stopped the official. 
After more than a month of long-distance traveling, Lu Zhang finally arrived at Beihai City. Just as he was planning to enter the city, he encountered an official arresting a thief. Lu Zhang was not an idle man who liked to be lively, and such things did not arouse his interest. It was only the man surrounded by officials that caught Lu Zhang's attention. Lu Zhang walked up to take a look, surrounded by officials were a man and a woman the woman looked fifty or sixty years old, with a rather pale, dusty face, sitting on a wheelbarrow, supposedly not very good with her legs. The man is eight feet tall, his face is like white jade, his eyes are like bright stars, shining, his arms are very long and very thick, and he has a beard. Seeing the beard, Lu Zhang was frightened. Jump. Could it be Guan Gong in person? But the face isn't red, and it's very white. This kind of body shape and appearance is not an idle person at a glance. As he was about to do so, Lu Zhang stopped the errand boy. And this gentleman is? The officials looked at Lu Zhang, and because they saw that Zhang was dressed in extraordinary clothes and had guards by his side, they did not dare to offend him easily. This is the son of Lord Lu, the assassin of Hebei. Without Lu Zhang having to say much, the guard behind him spoke first, his tone arrogant the officials dared not slacken off even more. I don't know what the gentleman's business is. Lu Zhang nonchalantly pointed at Taishir C.I. and said. I see that this strong man has a good meter and does not look like a cockney, is there some misunderstanding here? Seeing that Lu Zhang and Taishir C.I. did not know each other, the official simply put his heart down. The informant is here and has recognized the lost vehicle. It must have been this guy who saw the money. Taishir C's eyes were on fire after hearing this, and he was very angry. My mother has difficulty with her legs, so I have been pushing this cart since Dong Lai. It must be that you know who I am and are deliberately making things difficult. So what if it is, Humph, Taishir C.I., you treacherous person? It's hard to escape prison today. The official saw that the matter was clear, and he did not hide it any longer surprisingly, it is Taishir C.I. Lu Zhang is overjoyed in his heart, has the old sky opened its eyes? It's taking care of me, a traveler? Taishir C.I. looked at Lu Zhang, who had a happy face, and his heart went cold. This guy must want to catch me. Is there really no justice in this world? My mother is here. How can I drag her into this? He looked at the officials and Lu Zhang's guards with indignation, and said helplessly. Arrest me if you can but can you spare my mother, she has nothing to do with this. Seeing that Taishir C.I. was planning to tie his hands, the officials became even more unrestrained. You mother and son are both treacherous, and staying out there will surely be a disaster for others. If you don't give my mother life, I'll let you die too. The officials' words completely enraged Taishir C.I., and he saw that he was about to make a move. Wait, wait, wait. I know that Taishir Z is a man of loyalty and righteousness to the point of filial piety, and is by no means a treacherous person. My father has an old relationship with assassin Huang, why don't I go ahead and make peace, how about it? Seeing that the two parties had calmed down, Lu Zhang looked at Taishir C.I. again. Don't worry about Z, I. I will make sure that you, mother and son, are safe and sound. Seeing that things have turned around, Taishir C.I. also calmed down. He quickly thanked Lu Zhang. Thank you, Mr. Lu, no matter what, please spare my mother. I will repay your great favor in the future. After saying that, all of them headed to the Beihai Assassin's Mansion together the current assassin of Qingzhou was Huang Wan, whose grandfather had been a lieutenant and whose great-grandfather had also reached the rank of Shangshu Ling. Huang Wan, like Huang Zhong, is a descendant of Huang Xiang. A native of Jiangxia, he was a member of the Huang clan, one of the four great families of Jingzhou. Huang Wan and Lu Yan are from the same hometown, and they have an old history. My lord, Lu Zhang, the son of Lu Yan, the assassin of Jizhou, has come to pay his respects. At this moment, Huang Wan was working in the assassin's office when he heard the news from his subordinates. Oh? Lu Zhang? Please come in. Lu Zhang walked quickly to Huang Wan and arched his hand in a deep bow. Kid Lu Zhang, greetings to Uncle Huang. 
The prodigy is here. I haven't seen your father for years, is he well? Haha, <laughs> Uncle Huang is joking. Lu Zhang looked at Huang Wan, who had a pleasant face, and his heart was much more solid all is well with my father, and on his way. I was instructed before to come and pay my respects to Uncle Huang first, when I arrived in Beihai. This is a letter from my father to you. Huang Wan nodded and picked up the epistle, reading it carefully. I understand what your father means, you will stay with me for now. After that, I'll find Xing Xian and have you worship under him. Thank you Uncle Huang, there is one more thing. Lu Zhang talked about the matter of Taishir Ci. I thought it was still a bit difficult to do, but I didn't expect Huang Wan to agree very quickly. There is no right or wrong in this matter, I will command that it be no longer difficult for him. Thank you Uncle Huang, I won't disturb you for now then. Huang Wan instructed his subordinates to pack up the guest room and bring Lu Zhang forward to rest. Lu Zhang hurried back to Taishi Si's place, only to see that the ones inside the state capital had already notified the officials. The official looked at Taishi Si's mother and son, said count yourself lucky, and left. Many thanks for your great favor, Mr. Lu. Taishi Si I bowed deeply to Lu Zhang and kept thanking him. Z doesn't need to be polite. Lu Zhang picked up Taishi Si with both hands. How does the gentleman know my name? Taishi Si looked at Lu Zhang suspiciously. Chapter 11, Jiang Wang Huchen. Lu Zhang laughed, thinking that half of my coming to Beihai is for you, can I not know it? Couldn't say that with his mouth though, turned on his ass-kissing mode. Z's loyalty and filial piety, who in the world doesn't know that? Taishi Si was all a bit embarrassed and blushed slightly, your excellency is too kind. May I ask what your business is in the North Sea? Is it possible that you need me? Lu Zhang hears that Taishi Si wants to repay his kindness, and even more so, he cannot do as he wishes. I've come to the North Sea to study, and I wish to learn from Mr. Xing Xian. Why did Zi cart to the North Sea? Hey, the county government has a conflict with the state government, and I've offended the state government instead by working for the county government. Now the county government can't tolerate me, and the state government won't let me go, so I want to take my mother to Liaodong to avoid trouble. Lu Zhang is secretly glad that it is better to come early than coincidentally, if Taishi Si runs to Liaodong, how to find him? I see that the old madam is physically inconvenienced, not to mention the coldness of Liaodong, and now that the matter of the state capital has been resolved, why don't we just leave this matter at that? Taishir sighed heavily and shook his head slightly. I am also unwilling to labor my mother. But now that I've resigned from Dong Lai County, the state government is. It may settle scores in the fall. Taishir C.I. suddenly felt that the world was so big that he had nowhere to go, and his heart was sad. Lu Zhang saw that Taishir C.I. was already desperate and realized that the time to recruit him had come. Brother Z need not worry, if you don't mind, you can temporarily live in my escort commander, the old lady's body is also good to take care of nearby. Taishir C's face was unhappy, and he did not say anything. In his heart, however, he was very annoyed I, Taishir C I, am a man of honor. I can't be a gatekeeper. When he was about to refuse, Taishir C's mother glared at him. Seriously, she educated. Z, one needs to be honest in life. Mr. Lu has shown great kindness to my mother and son. Without Mr. Lu, could the two of us have escaped the pain of prison? I know you have a big heart, why have you ended up like this? Now that Mr. Lu wants to recruit, why do you hesitate? Taishir C.I. is a filial man, and he dares not disobey his mother's words. Sighing, he shook his head and bowed to Lu Zhang. Thank you for accepting Mr. Lu, I'll be at your disposal from now on. Lu Zhang looked at Taishir Si's expression of reluctance and lost his heart slightly. It seems that the more capable you are, the harder it is. Recruiting Huang Zhong, because of his son, Taishir Si, because of his mother. What about later? Will I be so lucky again? But luckily, it's always a surprise. It's also a great way to get what you're looking for. 
taking in another great general, let's just say it was meant to be first the five tiger generals, and now we're taking in the tiger ministers of the river table. Lu Zhang is more and more confident in the road to hegemony. Don't worry, Z, when I finish my studies, you will return to Jizhou with me. My father is now the assassin of Jizhou, and will surely allow you to realize the ambitions of your heart. Thank you, sir. Taishir C.I. slightly breathed a sigh of relief when he heard this, and it was somewhat promising. If we really let him watch the door and guard the yard for the rest of his life, we might as well kill him. Three days later, Lu Zhang, with the help of Huang Wan, successfully worshipped under Xingxian Lu Zhang stood beside Xingxian in a well-behaved manner and looked at the crowd underneath. You will be studying and living with these people from now on. From today onwards, Lu Zhang worships under old master and studies with you. Xingxian's expression was serious and his voice was filled with majesty. Teacher, I've heard that Lord Lu, the assassin of Jizhou, has a child. Also called Lu Zhang, and hailed as a prodigy by Su Xiao, I wonder if it's the same person? A student raised a question and Jing Xian frowned slightly. If in normal times, he would have chastised this student. But he also wanted to meet the so-called prodigy. Not bad, this is assassin Lu's son Lu Zhang. The student has heard that Mr. Lu is a wunderkind that is hard to come by in a hundred years and that he has created his own seven-syllable poems with his words. I wonder? Jing Xian did not answer the questions raised by the students and turned his head to look at Lu Zhang. Jing Xian was very curious as to whether or not Lu Zhang was as powerful as rumored. But since the beginning of time, it's hard to live up to a reputation. Most people overstate their case. Lu Zhang did not get the slightest bit angry in the face of the crowd's skepticism and responded with a smile. I really don't dare to take Lord Su's compliment. As for the rumors you all have heard about me, most of them are also false. When these words came out, there was an uproar at the bottom. Even Jing Xian was a little disappointed. It seems that Lu Zheng's talent is a rumor. Most people have this thought in their minds. I was young and left home alone to study. The thought of not being able to serve my mother makes me very sad. Midway through composing a poem, I wonder if it will catch my eye. When Jing Xian heard this, he became interested. I thought that Lu Zhang had chickened out, but I didn't expect to take the initiative to show his talent. Speak. Lu Zhang bowed to Jing Xian with an arch of his hand. Please, sensei. In his heart, he said, Brother Meng Jiao, I am offended. The thread in the hands of a loving mother, the clothes on the body of a wandering son. The proximity of the line is a secret, and the intention is to return late. Who says an inch of grass is good enough for three springs of sunshine? Looking at the stunned expressions of the crowd, Lu Zhang smiled faintly. Does this poem have a name? The name is, Wanderer's Chant. Xing Xian first came back to his senses and looked at Lu Zhang with eyes that had changed. With a slight nod, he sighed. If it were not for a man of the most filial piety, he could not have written such a fine line. The person who had made things difficult for the party got up and apologized to Lu Zhang, Mr. Lu's talent is amazing, I admire it. It seems the rumors are not false. Lu Zhang arched his hand and returned the salute, he very much appreciated this person, he can afford to let go, he is a frank gentleman. May I ask your name? I am Kokubuchi Zini. Lu Zhang's pupils shrunk, so it was him. Chapter 12 The Situation in the Han Dynasty Lu Zheng's Beihai studies began with Guiyuan's difficulties. Five years have passed in the blink of an eye. Lu Zhang was as diligent as ever. Five years of studying and working out. Only one more dating. Lu Zhang had already accomplished his important goal of recruiting Taishir CI when he first arrived in Beihai. Without a fight, he befriended Guiyuan with a song called The Song of the Traveling Sun, and at the same time became a confidant with Guiyuan's close friend Sun Qian. Five years had passed, and the time had come to 183 AD, less than a year before the Yellow Turban Rebellion. The 15-year-old Lu Zhang had already had an amazing change. He has grown to be over seven feet tall, far beyond his age. 
A magnificent muscular body has been covered up and is visually stunning. Some of the childish faces are slightly disjointed and a bit King Kong Barbie-ish. Z, Zini, Gong Yu, please. Lu Zhang raised his wine cup and toasted the three people in front of him. These three people were his main goal in coming to the North Sea. Taishi Ci, Guiyuan, Sun Qian. Chao Chao in the future. Lu Bei, Sun Quan's important minister. Please. All four of them drank at the same time, and Lu Zhang took the initiative to pour wine for the three of them. Time passes, years pass, I don't realize that we have been friends for five years. Lu Zhang's exclamation resonated with the three of them, and Gui Yuan raised his cup in honor of Lu Zhang a song of your younger brothers back in the day, the song of the wandering sun, is unforgettable to my humble brother to this day. My brother and I are not fighting. Fuck. Lu Zhang's face straightened as he looked at the three men and said seriously. Now that my studies are done, I don't want to tarry here. I will return to Luo Yang tomorrow, after bidding farewell to my benefactor. Oh? Sage is going back? Lu Zhang's resignation didn't shock them, after all, Lu Zhang's studies had long been completed. Not bad, now the times are in turmoil and the borders have been in chaos for a long time. As a Hong clan member, I should serve my country. Sage brother has great ambitions. Admirable. Lu Zhang looked at Taishi Ci somewhat apologetically Z, in the past. When my father was the assassin of Hebei province, he promised Zi that he would recommend him to his father. Now that my father has been transferred to the patriarchate, I'm afraid he's going to go back on his word. I'm so sorry. Taishi Ci was unconcerned and arched his hand. Your Excellency has shown great kindness to my mother and son, how would Zi dare to ask for anything else? Please don't take it to heart, sir. Lu Zhang nodded slightly and looked towards the Guiyuan duo. What do you two brothers think of the current world? Sun Qian and Taishi Ci didn't say anything, but Guiyuan couldn't help but spit. Nowadays, the world is going downhill, the court is buying and selling titles, and eunuchs are interfering with the government, leading to the people's insecurity. Lu Zhang nodded his head, expressing his approval of Guiyuan and voicing his own opinion again. Not only that, the imperial court's war against the Western Chang lasted for decades and cost a great deal. The labor and military service was severe. Do you brothers know about the Taiping Dao? I know, nowadays, there are a lot of people from the Taiping Dao, and they are widely applying talismanic water to cure the sick and save people. It is spread to all the states and counties. Kokubuchi showed a worried look. Now that the courtroom is dim, I'm afraid it will give certain people an opportunity to take advantage of it. Seeing that all three were worried, Lu Zhang scolded sternly. The matter of Z shows how chaotic the court and state government are, and how the upper echelons ignore the plight of the peasants. Under the guise of curing the sick and saving people, the three Zhang Jiao brothers have recruited believers widely, and their momentum is already unstoppable. It is said that the believers have amounted to hundreds of thousands, spreading across all states and counties. What's more, some sell their family possessions and follow them for thousands of miles. And there is no lack of powerful people and officials among them. So much so that they failed to attract the attention of the court. In my opinion, the Taiping Dao will rebel. The three gazes were stunned, looking at Lu Zhang incredulously. The word rebellion was too distant for them living in the years of peace. Lu Zhang was unimpressed by their stares and continued to lay down the hard drugs the three elder brothers are not outsiders, nowadays, the great Han is full of holes and cannot be cured without a strong medicine. And the Taiping Dao is the very introduction to this fierce medicine. Today, His Majesty is buying and selling official titles, internally there are eunuchs and foreign relatives competing for power and profit and externally there is the scourge of party confinement. Nowadays, the great Han dynasty has reached a time of life and death, if there is no one to save the day, then. Ai. Lu Zhang did not continue to say, I believe that the few people sitting already know it, by heart. Sun Qian looks at Lu Zhang with disbelief. Is it too much? Lu Zhang glanced at him and gently shook his head. 
It will only be worse than thought, and I dare not delay any longer. When you return to the Daleks, seek a military position. In case of misfortune, Guayuan is much more calm than Sun Qian, and just praises Lu Zhang. Sage brother is worthy of being a member of the Han family with great ambitions. I know that all of you have great aspirations, can you go to Luoyang with me and try to serve the country? Lu Zhang raised his glass to look at the crowd, he hoped that the three would help him. Taishir Ci raised his wine cup and said loudly, Taishir Ci is willing to follow your excellency. Yes. Although Lu Zhang had known that Taishir Ci would follow him, it meant something different from him saying it himself. Right now, the Yellow Turban Rebellion most needs is a fierce general like Taishir Ci. He then looked at the two Kokubuchi, who were also very important to him. Chapter 13 Lu Zhang's Ambition It's not that I don't want to serve my country, it's just that the situation is unclear. What's more, Ensure is getting old and needs to be taken care of. Gui Yuan thought for a moment and did not agree. Sun Qian also refused in this way. Lu Zhang nodded slightly, knowing that he could not attract the duo now. If one day what I say comes true, will you help me? It's useless to force it, so you might as well plant a seed. The two looked at each other, not expecting Lu Zhang to be so persistent, so they agreed. If he really has another trick up his sleeve in the future, as my brother said, he will not push it. Thank you, brothers. This result Lu Zhang has been very satisfied, he didn't feel that he had so much charisma to directly accept the duo. Gui Yuan and Sun Qian were both gentlemen and would certainly not go back on their word to him. After that, the four did not talk about national issues, but only exchange of knowledge, the atmosphere is very cordial. Now that it's getting late and Virtuous Brother still has to pack his luggage, we will take our leave first. Seeing how late it was already, Gui Yuan and Sun Qian offered their farewells. Lu Zhang got up to see them off. Then I won't keep my brother, so he should rest early. Taishir Ci asked once he saw the two men leave. What the gentleman said before. Lu Zhang sighed. Far more than that. Z, building a career is just around the corner. Taishir Ci nodded slightly and clenched his fists. To him, the battlefield was the place to aspire to. The next day, Xing Xian study. Lu Zhang bowed deeply, expressing his gratitude once again for Jing Xian's many years of teaching. Many thanks for the cultivation of my benefactor, the boy wishes to take his leave of his benefactor today and return to Luo Yang. Jing Xian was very pleased with Lu Zhang, studying hard and being humble. You came here when you were ten years old, and now it's been five years. You are exceptionally intelligent, and all that you have learned is a little bit of everything. But you are more dedicated to books on military science, and I know what you think. Lu Zhang was about to speak, only to see Jing Xian interrupt him with a wave of his hand. There is no need to say much. In the future, you only need to serve the country and benefit the people. The words of my benefactor will be kept in mind. Lu Zhang agreed in one breath. Jing Xian gave an enunciation and nodded his head in relief, but he still couldn't help but give a command. Remember, no paperwork. Disciple keeps this in mind. Jang has one more thing to ask the enlightened master to clear up. Speak. Jing Xian was curious as to what dilemma this intelligent disciple would give himself. Is it possible to make all the people of the world literate and read? Jing Xian was a bit stunned as he looked at the serious Lu Zhang Hao. Could this incredibly intelligent disciple ask such a stupid question? Difficult. Jing Xian only replied with the word difficult. This difficult seemed like a thousand difficulties. Lu Zhang remained undeterred and continued to pursue. If it is possible to do so, will the enchanter help? Jing Xian let out a bitter smile, this ideal was good, just not realistic. Still, he coped with it. Rather, it is calculated to the head of the teacher, also, if it is really as you say. At that time, according to you is. Many thanks to the benefactor, there is one more thing, if there is a change in his day, I still ask the benefactor to go to Ijo. Lu Zhang knew that Jing Xian would avoid Liaodong in the future, 
so he wanted him to come to his territory. A change in his day? Xing Xian looked at Lu Zhang with a smirk. Lu Zhang smiled. Enchanter will know later. Good thing too. Xing Xian said. Come with me to your last class and say goodbye to your mentors. Nah. Coming to class and looking at familiar faces had a bout of sadness. After all, after five years of living and learning, you have a bond with your fellow teachers. Today, Lu Zhang leaves to return to Luoyang. Master brought him to say goodbye to you. Lu Zhang arched his hands and looked at the crowd below. Fellow brothers and sisters, Lu Zhang would like to thank you all for your help over the past few years. I don't know when we'll see each other again after today's parting, so I hope you'll all take care of yourselves. The crowd at the bottom also arched their hands and sent their blessings. Lu Zhang is usually very low-key, never proud of his status and talents, and is very well-liked. When you came here, you composed a song, the Song of the Wanderer, and everyone knows that you are a man of the most filial piety. As we part today, why don't you compose another poem to show the crowd what you aspire to? How? Xing Xian looked at Lu Zhang and issued a proposal. Nowadays, he does not have the slightest doubt about Lu Zhang's talent, and composing a poem in farewell is just a sudden thought. Xing Xian believed that Lu Zhang had the ability to do so, and the two poems were enough to become a good story. Good. Everyone greatly admires senior brother Lu's talent. Yes, senior brother Lu, quickly compose a poem. Facing the expectant eyes of his benefactor and the compliments of his brothers and sisters, Lu Zhang was slightly sweating. Lu Zhang couldn't help but sigh in his heart, it's time to be a porter again. Since it is Ensure's proposal, Lu Zhang will comply. Please also allow Lu Zhang to think about it. Saying this Lu Zhang began to walk indoors, and the crowd was secretly counting Lu Zhang's steps. One step, two steps, three steps, four steps, five steps. There. Lu Zhang stopped and bowed to Jing Xian. The name of the poem is, Out of the Seaside, and I'd like to ask for your guidance. Jing Xian smiled and nodded, signaling him to speak quickly. When the moon is bright in the Qing dynasty, when the Han dynasty passes, the people of the Long March have not yet returned. When Lu Zhang's verse came out, it caused a commotion. It's appeared. It's senior brother Lu's seven-character poem. Quiet. Let Shitty finish the poem. Senior brother, there's more back there, right? Quickly tell us. Lu Zhang smiled and nodded, speaking aloud. But the flying generals in the Dragon City will not let the horses and hunters go to the Inshan Mountain. Looking at the shocked looks of the crowd, Lu Zhang continued to speak of his ambitions. Lu Zhang's dream is to become a general like Wei Qing, Hu Jiaoyi. Dead or alive, a tombstone inscribed with Han Huzar is sufficient. Lu Zhang quietly left amidst the shock of the crowd, and as he was leaving, Xing Xian gave him a look. He knew that the look was both encouraging and affirming. Chapter 14 Purpose of the Proximity and Distance The Yellow River Ferry Crossing Taishir Si pointed to the distant ships and made a suggestion to Lu Zhang. My lord, we can take a boat and go directly to the Mengjin Ferry in Sizhou it will save a lot of time compared to traveling by land. The world is not a peaceful place these days, so it's better to be careful. Hearing Taishir Si's words, Lu Zhang's heart stirred. I wonder how DM is doing. Thinking of Kai Yan, Lu Zhang couldn't help but smile at the corner of his mouth as that incomparably gentle girl flashed through his mind. No, we'll go by land, first to Taishan County, I'm going to meet a great talent. Lu Zhang was not overwhelmed by the miss, the chaos was coming and he had more important things to do. All right, I'll escort the mail to it. Taishir Si saw Lu Zhang insisting and didn't try to persuade him further. Lu Zhang's complexion lightened and he couldn't help but laugh. Z, don't underestimate me, nowadays I'm not a man with no hands. Taishir Si looked at Lu Zhang's strong physique and also felt himself getting a little nervous, Your Excellency is modest. Nowadays your martial arts are not comparable to idle ones. Z, don't make fun of me. I'm just a little bit of brute strength. There's no martial arts to speak of. 
Lu Zhang smiled to himself and took out a bamboo slip from his pocket and handed it to the guard. You will first escort the old lady back to Luo Yang and deliver this letter to my father. Z, and I will simply head to Taishan County. The guards were also worried about Lu Zhang's safety, but couldn't argue with their master and could only answer the order. Be sure to serve with care, and make sure to keep the old lady safe. Lu Zhang instructed once more that Taishi Ci is the most filial person, and his mother Lu Zhang must make proper arrangements. The two irritated mother walked out and looked at a serious face at Taishi Ci. Z, even if you break your bones, you must protect your son. Please, Mother Superior. Taisha assured his mother with his words. The ship drifted away, and Lu Zhang did not tarry. Let's go Z. As the two steeds galloped towards Taishan County, Taisha Ci could not help but feel some curiosity in his heart. Just what kind of person could make the duke take it so seriously? Tarzan Army County of Fonggao. My lord, it took more than ten days, but we finally arrived. Looking at the dusty Taisher CI, Lu Zhang could think that he should not be very elegant either. Yeah, I hope we both didn't come here for nothing. Passing through several counties along the way, can Z see any difference? Taisher CI thought for a moment and whispered. There are indeed many suspicions. There's no hurry, it's now midday, we'll have some meals first. Lu Zhang felt a little hungry, and the two of them found a tavern. After sitting down, they ordered a few small dishes. Lu Zhang looked around and the three people next to him caught his attention. Brother Ma, be careful on this trip to Luo Yang. Lu Zhang could not help but look towards them and heard this brother Ma say to his companion. The same applies to the two brothers, it is now the month of June, so remember not to delay the great event. The two of us will split up, he will go to Yangzhou, and I will go to Jingzhou, there will be no delay. Please don't worry, brother Yuani. The slightly fatter man swore. After that, the three of them left the tavern together Ma Yuani. Lu Zhang was secretly surprised in his heart, so Zhang Jiao had already started to act. Thinking of his confrontation with Zhang Jiao twelve years ago, Lu Zhang could not help but clench his fists. Duke? Taishir Ci was a little confused when he saw Lu Zhang's tense expression. Lu Zhang turned back and took a sip of the water in his hand. Anything suspicious along the way? Taishir Ci thought briefly. The Taiping Dao congregation is very large, and there is no shortage of well-trained men. Far more than that. Lu Zhang said in a heavy tone. They're friends with the government, and many of them have hidden weapons. Taishir nodded. Exactly. If we follow what the Duke Beihai said, I'm afraid the disaster is not far away. Now that it is already June, we still need to return to Luo Yang as soon as possible, and after the meal go quickly to visit County Chancellor Zhu Bigue. Lu Zhang already feels that time is running out, Taishan to Luo Yang still needs quite a bit of time. The great talent that Your Excellency is talking about is Zhu Bigue? No. Lu Zhang laughed softly. It's his son. Idle gossip. The food was brought up and the two of them ate each other without ceremony. Half an hour later, the duo walked out of the tavern in contentment. After some inquiries, I finally found Zhugagui's house. The Zhuga clan of Luangia is also considered a family, but it can't be compared to the Sun clan of Ingchuan, or the Sima clan of Hanoi, which are legacy families. Much less so than the top clans, the Yuan and Yang clans, which can now only be considered prestige clans. Zhuge Liang's grandfather, Zhuge Feng, had been a lieutenant of the division, and his father, Zhuge Gue, and his uncle, Zhuge Xian, were also working as officials, but they were all local officials, not of great rank the two of them stood at the entrance of Zhuge's house, only to see white cloths hanging everywhere, and the sound of crying faintly coming from inside. Lu Zhang's heart is cold, could it be that Zhuge Gue is dead? But I clearly remember that Zhuge Gue is going to be the county minister for a few more years. Just as Lu Zhang was brainstorming, a middle-aged man walked out, who was neatly dressed and had an unassuming appearance. Lu Zhang rushed forward to inquire. May I ask who passed away in there? The middle-aged man frowned with some displeasure. Who are you? 
Chapter 15 The Funeral of the Zhuge Family This is the Han clan member and current Zhongxing Lord Lu Yan's son. Taishir C.I. saw the bad tone of the visitor and was not polite himself the middle-aged man was taken aback at his words, how did this ninth secretary's son come to Taishan County? So it's Mr. Lu, I'm Taishan County Guardian Wang Jin. Greetings to Sheriff Wang. Lu Zhang arched his hand in salute and lowered his stance. Wang Jin looked at the dusty Lu Zhang duo and asked. Is there something wrong with you, sir? The two of us came from the North Sea on purpose to visit Mr. Zhuge Gue. Inside, plain onyx clothing, could it be? Wang Jin saw Lu Zhang's worried face and knew that he had misunderstood, so he hastened to explain. No, it's County Minister Zhuge's wife who passed away. Lu Zhang looked at Wang Jin and asked. Would the sheriff be so kind as to make some introductions on my behalf? Well, come in. Wang Jin brought Lu Zhang and the two of them to Zhuge Gui's home. The Zhuge family is very simple, supposedly related to family tradition since my grandfather, Zhuge Feng, he has been a member of the Qing dynasty. A person of integrity, the home furnishings are simple and generous. Lu Zhang walked to the front of the hall and took a glance, there were two men and two women kneeling next to the coffin. The older ones are around ten years old and the younger ones are only three or four. Lu Zhang's gaze focused directly on the little boy. A middle-aged man walked quickly and looked suspiciously at Wang Jin, who had gone and returned. Seeing Lu Zhang still staring at the people inside the room, Taishi Cai hurriedly coughed lightly. Lu Zhang looked back at the person walking towards him. The man was dressed in white and plain clothes, seven feet tall, and had a good appearance. Just a little dullness in the eyes, which should be caused by excessive sadness. Lord Sheriff. Zhuge Gui looked at Wang Jin, who had gone and returned, and bowed respectfully. Sage brother, this is Lu Zongjing's son, who came from the North Sea especially to see you. When Wang Jin introduced himself, he purposely bit the word Zongjing very heavily. Zhuge Gui looked at Lu Zhang slightly, the Zhuge family and the Lu family should not have any friendship. I don't know what the gentleman has to say. Lu Zhang, archaic. Where do you dare to instruct Zhuge Gui, first bowed, then slowly said. Sir is joking, how dare the boy instruct sir? I've heard that mister. Clean and honest and learned. The boy has come to pay his respects. It's really better to be known than to be seen, sir is really as famous as he is. As the saying goes, a thousand wears a thousand, but a horse's ass does not wear. As soon as Lu Zhang said this, Zhuge Gui's face turned slightly red and he was busy saying that he did not dare to dare. Wang Jin, however, laughed and nodded approvingly. He knew Zhuge Gui very well as a person. There is no need to be modest, virtuous brother, the male will not be deceived. There is still official business at the county hall, so I will leave first. Thinking that there were important matters in the house, he excused himself. Lu Zhang quickly thanked him and sent Wang Jin away. Zhuge Gui invited Lu Zhang into the house and, seeing no one around, asked again. There's no one at the moment, so if the gentleman has something to say, he can just say it. When really there is nothing but a visit to the gentleman. Lu Zhang's eyes were sincere and did not seem to be feigned, and Zhuge Gui also. Believe it for a while. In that case, Your Excellency may stay at my house for the time being, and we will entertain you after the burial. Lu Zhang expresses his gratitude and tells Zhuge Gui not to mind himself, go ahead and get busy. Three days later, Zhuge Gui's wife was buried, and everything went very smoothly. After a few days together, Lu Zhang also became acquainted with Zhuge Gui's two sons The oldest son, Zhuge Jin, is twelve years old. The second son, Zhuge Liang, was only four years old. There is also a one-year-old baby, Zhuge Jun. As for the two six- or seven-year-old daughters, Lu Zhang didn't touch them too much. Zhuge Jin was relatively thin, standing at just over five feet tall, quite a bit shorter than Lu Zhang. The features are decent, only the face is very long, no wonder Sun Quan always said Zhuge Jin looks like a donkey. Zhuge Jin has a thick face and is an honest man at first glance. 
Zhuge Jin was very knowledgeable, having read the classic of poetry, Shang Shu, and Swiss Spring and Autumn Annals. Although the Zhuge family is not very wealthy, but at least it is a prestigious family, the family has a collection of books quite a lot. The Zhuge Jin discussed with Lu Zhang when he had time and was very impressed with Lu Zhang's knowledge. Compared to Zhuge Jin, the four-year-old Zhuge Liang already showed far more extraordinary talent there is a love for all kinds of books and a comprehension that is very human. At the age of four, Zhuge Liang had his own unique insights, making Lu Zhang very ashamed of his title of prodigy. Feeling that he is not a little bit worse than that, his obsession with Zhuge Liang is getting deeper and deeper. Lu Zhang can't stay in Taishan forever, after all, the Yellow Turban Rebellion is imminent, so he proposes to leave. Zhuge Gui was very reluctant to let go, and kept Lu Zhang again and again. Although it was only a short ten days, he no longer dared to underestimate this teenager. Physically fit, martial arts must be extraordinary. Outstanding literary talent and eloquent speech. And a disciple of the great scholar, Xing Xian. Though not yet an adult, the sharpness is already obscured. He is a member of the Han family, and his father, Lu Yan, holds a high position as one of the nine ministers. Zhuge Gui is convinced that in time, Lu Zhang will be a hit chapter 16, parting gift of a book. Outside the city, Zhuge Gui's family came to see him off. The somewhat mute Zhuge Jin was the first to thank Lu Zhang. Although my friendship with Brother Lu is short, I have gained a lot. Brother's words that reading 10,000 scrolls of books is better than traveling 10,000 miles touches me deeply. Thank you for Brother Lu's teachings these past few days. Zhuge Jin bowed deeply to show his gratitude. Lu Zhang hurriedly helped him up and patted his shoulder in relief. Hyunji over praise, you are a diamond in the rough, you and I should work together in the future. Then he had Taishir pass over a box. Before you leave, I have a gift for you. This is the scripture of ancient writings, taught by my benefactor Zheng Xian. I hereby gift it to you, and I hope you will study it well. Lu Zhang opened the box and pointed to the scrolls filled inside Zhuge Jin looked excitedly at the books in the box, to him, books were very precious things. Lu Zhang is a little sad, he knows that for Zhuge Jin probability is a basket of water. With the wisdom of the Zhuge family, they would surely not have two brothers defecting to one power. Moreover, this set of ancient scriptures was not gifted by Zheng Xian at all, it was completely copied by Lu Zhang, by hand. Never mind, everything is for Zhuge Liang. Lu Zhang can only comfort himself in this way. Lu Zhang loved Zhuge Liang even more than his father, for more than ten days without fail. Sometimes he really wanted to say to Zhuge Gui that I'll carry the child away, and from now on this is my prime minister. That's just thinking about it. If he did, people would think there was something wrong with him. He didn't want to interfere with Zhuge Liang's growth, then he took two copies of the rolled bamboo slips, this is the 36 stratagems, six sets in total. This time, I will give you the strategy for victory, and the strategy for defeat. Drill well, and do not fail me. Zhuge Liang was not polite, and as soon as he grabbed it in his hand, he questioned it instead. What about the remaining four sets? Lu Zhang was amused and picked up Zhuge Liang and knocked him on the head. Do not be greedy for more. Come back to me when you have fully comprehended it. I'll naturally give it to you when the time comes. This is my heart's blood, study it well. Lu Zhang looked at Zhuge Liang with a face of reluctance, what he can do has been done, the only thing left is to wait. Little Zhuge Liang looked at him in Lu Zhang's arms without speaking, but his eyes were unusually bright. The look in his eyes seemed to tell him that he would not be disappointed come on. Perhaps it will still be you who leads the people of Ijo, in the northern expedition, to the central plains. We will surely be able to rewrite history. Lu Zhang sighed in his heart. And Zhuge Liang could never have imagined that in history, he himself overthrew the man who held him. Now, history is destined to be rewritten. Putting Zhuge Liang down, Lu Zhang gave a deep bow to Zhuge Gui. I'm grateful to have been treated so kindly by Mr. Harassment for many days. I admire your talent and your kindness to my son, 
so I can't spend more time with him. Zhugagui's tone was very sincere, he was very appreciative of Lu Zhang as a teenager. Or a forgotten friend. Take care. Lu Zhang laughed and rolled onto his horse. Take care. Lu Zhang arched his hand towards Zhu Gagui and once again gazed at the man who raised the prime ministers of both countries. He knew that this separation was goodbye forever saying goodbye to the crowd, Lu Zhang no longer hesitates and slowly disappears with Taishi Ci into the eyes of the crowd. Zhu Liang looked at the direction Lu Zhang had left and was reluctant to leave for a long time. Yanzhou, Chenlu County, Guigua City. Your Excellency, is that Dianwei really so powerful? How could it make you so upset? Taishi Ci looked at Lu Zhang's regretful appearance and was very puzzled. Lu Zhang seemed as if he hadn't heard Taishi Ci's words and was still in a depressed mood. After the two of them came out of Taishan County, they came straight to Chenlu County. There was never any delay except for necessary rest. But in the rush, I was still late. The two of them, Lu Zhang, had just entered the city gates when they saw a manhunt notice for Dian Wei. Dian Wei has avenged his friend's death by killing Li Yong, a member of the Li family, a major clan in Yanzhou, and is now on the run Lu Zhang's side and shook his head in regret. Dian Wei is cynical and born with tremendous strength. It is a rare talent. Today it is surprising to miss the mark, it is really. Pity. Lamentable. Pathetic. Lu Zhang shook his head and sighed again, he was really upset. Dian Wei is a peasant origin, all alone, without any ties, recruiting Dian Wei, that is 9 out of 10. Lu Zhang is really unwilling to give up on this, a fierce general like Dian Wei, who is also of peasant origin. In this era, is a phoenix feather. If you miss Dian Wei, you may never meet him again in your life. Lu Zhang decides to settle down in Guiwu City for the time being to look for Dian Wei. The two of them have made many inquiries and spent a lot of gold and silver, but they still have no clue. It was as if Dian Wei had evaporated from the earth. Three days passed in a flash, and Lu Zhang knew that he could no longer spend time he writes now October, and it's still some time to the Luo Yang. We can't afford any more delays. Let's go, maybe I'm really not meant to be with Dian Wei. Lu Zhang gave a reluctant look and no longer hesitated to walk towards the city gates. Taishi Ci did not speak and followed Lu Zhang. The two of them went out of the city and rode towards Tiger Prison Pass. Looking at Taishi Ci's unhappy face, Lu Zhang apologized a little. I'm already blessed to have Zi, I shouldn't expect too much. Hearing Lu Zhang say this, Taishi Ci hurriedly explained. Not to His Excellency, but to that Dian Wei. If he overstates his case and kills someone and flees, I'm afraid the prince will be greatly disappointed. Before the words left his mouth, he heard a growling sound coming from the woods not far away. Ho, ho, ho. Taishi Ci was a bit nervous and looked towards Lu Zhang. What's that noise? Lu Zhang shivered and was taken aback in my previous life, I had electronic equipment and had heard about it several times but never so up close and personal. Lu Zhang looked at Taishi Ci with a heavy tone. It's a tiger. Chapter 17 The Terrified Lu Zhang Taishi Ci's expression was stunned, and his eyebrows were tensed, displaying a look of nervousness. Bad, even Taishi Ci is so nervous, this time is really dangerous. Lu Zhang was already timid, if not for Taishi Ci, he would have run away. While he was rambling, Taishi Ci's voice came to his ears. What is a tiger, my lord? Lu Zhang's eyes widened as he looked at Taishi Ci, unable to stop himself from spitting in his heart. So you don't know what it is, and it's making me so nervous. Lu Zhang's expression made Taishi Ci very embarrassed and he could only cough lightly. Ahem, sir? Huh? Ah. The tiger is also known as the big bug. Taishi Ci nodded in realization, oh. So that's it. I've only heard of it, but never seen it. Lu Zhang didn't have the good sense to give him a look, this kind of beast can't be found everywhere. This animal is temperamental and often eats people. Lu Zhang suddenly had a hot head and asked Taishi Ci. 
Will Zi dare to fight with me, to rid the people of evil? If it was Lu Zhang himself, he would never have dared to be so arrogant. Now that Taishir CI is around, and marksman, at least safety is not a problem. Lu Zhang has been a man for two lifetimes, but he has never killed anyone, and he would like to take this opportunity to try his hand at it. A single man who killed a tiger, with his bare hands, has also been documented. I am willing to go with your excellency. Taishir CI was completely unafraid and agreed in one breath. Even if Lu Zhang doesn't say anything, according to Taishir C's character, he is going to ask for an order to go and get rid of the harm for the people the horse was already spooked at this point, so if he saw the tiger again, it was a guarantee that something would go wrong. The two could only hitch up their horses and go on foot. The sound became clearer as they got closer. Lu Zhang tightly gripped the long sword in his hand, and his palm was already wet with sweat. Taishir C.I. also had a grave look on his face, after all, he had never seen such a beast before. Finally, the duo saw the manticore not far away. This tiger was more than nine feet long, with a black and yellow body and extremely thick limbs. A distinctive word for king was stamped on the large head. Both eyes glowed green and his mouth was wide open, revealing sharp teeth. Ho, ho, ho! Lu Zhang looked at the tiger that was close at hand and instant fear struck him. I just felt a cold sweat all over my body. His legs were also out of control, and he could only tremble in place, unable to move half a step seeing how scared Lu Zhang was, Taishir Ci put his hand on his shoulder and whispered reassurance. Your Excellency is relieved, with me here, I will not let Your Excellency be harmed. Lu Zhang secretly blamed himself for being weak and incompetent, and was actually scared like this. It's too embarrassing, Lu Zhang couldn't help but have a red face. With a sharp bite of his tongue, the pain stimulated his brain and his body returned to action. Lu Zhang's gaze kept sweeping over the tiger, eventually resting on the tiger's abdomen. This tiger's stomach was dripping blood, and there was a weapon in the wound. No wonder it's been growling, it's been injured. Z, this tiger is now wounded, you can shoot it with arrows. No. Taishir C.I. placed his lance on the ground and carefully took the bow and arrow. Taking a deep breath, the three-stone strong bow was instantly drawn to full strength then, there was only a clinking sound, and the arrow had passed through the tiger's neck. Z Shinjun. Lu Zhang shouted in excitement. Looking at Tai Shi C's hand still slightly shaking the bowstring, Lu Zhang secretly admired it. This is a real three-stone strong bow, with Lu Zhang's arm strength. It's not even close to pulling. The two of them watched some more and saw that the tiger could no longer stand up before they walked over. This small halberd has penetrated deep into the belly. There should already be someone fighting with it. Lu Zhang looked in the direction Tai Shi C.I. pointed and sure enough, there was a small halberd-shaped weapon. This weapon feels a bit familiar, could it be? Just as Lu Zhang was still lost in thought, came the shouts of Taishir C.I. My lord, kill it quickly, so you won't be afraid later. Lu Zhang nodded to Taishir C.I. and raised the long sword in his hand laying on the ground gasping for breath, the fierce tiger stared at him dead on with green eyes, and Lu Zhang trembled with fear again. My lord do it. Seeing that Lu Zhang was stunned, Taishir C.I. hurriedly shouted out. I am really weak and incompetent, I don't even dare to kill a dying tiger, how can I lead my generals to charge into battle in the future? Lu Zhang closed his eyes and clenched his teeth as his long sword violently stabbed downward, directly into the heart of the fierce tiger. The tiger roared angrily, then whimpered and sucked hard a few times before it died and stopped moving. Lu Zhang felt like his body's strength was being emptied out, and he directly sat down on the ground. Panting heavily. Gas. Well done, my lord. Taishir C.I. picked up Lu Zhang, who was sitting paralyzed on the ground, and complimented him in passing. Looking at the fierce tiger that he had killed, Lu Zhang still had palpitations in two lifetimes, I've never killed a living thing. I didn't even dare to kill a chicken in my previous life. For the youth of the 21st century, killing is too intimidating. And it's a rare sighting of a fierce tiger. 
Lu Zhang took a few deep breaths to calm his excitement and patted the dust on his body with his hand. Thanks for the party, Z. Taishir Ci shook his head and did not speak. Attention was focused on the small halberd. Z recognizes this object? Lu Zhang looked at Taishir Ci's gaze and assumed that he recognized this item. Without ever recognizing it, it's just that the power and means with which this object was thrown must have been extremely high. Taishir Ci shook his head in great admiration. Though I can open a bow of three stones, I have no such means. Then it must be this person, Lu Zhang was slightly pleased in his heart but, then I got worried. The tiger is here, where is the man? Has he been buried in the tiger's mouth? Just as he was about to question Taishir Ci, he saw a man jump out from the side. Chapter 18, Taishir Ci's Deadly Fight Lu Zhang looked around and saw that this person was like a small mountain. More than nine feet tall, fierce face, hair, face like black charcoal, wide mouth and round eyes, bladder three stops, tiger back and bare waist. In his hand was a rusted halberd. Upon closer inspection, the clothes on his entire body were badly torn, and his toned muscles were visible. It was just covered in blood stains, I don't know if it was an injury or someone else's blood. Did you kill this big bug? The man stepped closer, looked at the bow and arrow through his neck, and opened his mouth to ask a question. Lu Zhang was startled, this person's voice was as loud as thunder, and being too close, it shook his ears Taishir Ci held his lance in his hand and blocked Lu Zhang behind him. Killed by us. Taishir Ci, who was proud of his bravery, also had to pay attention to the strong man in front of him. The man was so incredibly long that he didn't look like a normal human at all. Are you Dian Wei? Just when Taishir Ci was highly concentrated, Lu Zhang behind him sounded somewhat excited. Oh? You know me? Dian Wei glanced at Lu Zhang and frowned slightly at the uncharacteristically dressed duo. Where have you come from and who are you? Dian Wei's loud voice made Taishir Ci's heart furious, and he also responded at the top of his voice. We have come from a few Gu, this is the son of Lord Lu, the current Zongxing. Lu Zhang hurriedly pulled Taishir Ci and signaled him to keep quiet, but he was still a step too late. Before Taishir Ci could finish his words, Dian Wei suddenly burst into a rage, you dog officials, how dare you chase me here? Die. Saying so, he raised his halberd and slashed at Taishir Ci. It's bad. There must be a misunderstanding. Dian Wei thinks we're here to capture him. Lu Zhang was anxious in his heart and hurriedly explained in a loud voice. Dang, Zhuangshir don't do it. You misunderstand, we're not here to arrest you. You dog officials, you have no faith. Dian Wei didn't believe it at all, his halberd had already smashed into Taishir Ci. There was a loud thud. The halberd slammed into the ground, smashing a small crater into the ground. Taishir Ci dodged and looked at the small pit on the ground. If he hadn't dodged this halberd, he would have been afraid of death. This guy is really motivated to kill, I can't just sit back and wait. Straightening his spear and pointing straight at Dian Wei, he cursed loudly. You're so unreasonable. Dian Wei let out a cold smile, his gaze was ruthless. What sense is there to be made with you dog officials? He said and charged again, with his halberd raised. Die. I'm not afraid of you. Seeing that words could no longer explain, Taishir Ci could only meet the battle. Dang. 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 The sound of weapons clashing was constantly heard in the air. The two of them made vicious moves, attacking their opponents' vitals at every turn. In particular, Dian Wei wanted to result in Taishir Ci's life with every strike. After dozens of rounds, the two sides briefly separated and stared at each other. Dian Wei's eyes narrowed slightly, already even Taishir Ci is not an idle generation, the heart does not dare to belittle half a point again Taishir Ci's hands kept clenching and unclenching, his face becoming even more grave. This guy is too strong. Can't fight it anymore. Taishir Ci looked at his hands and marveled. His hands were already starting to go numb, if he were to fight hard, the one who would die would definitely be himself. 
With a roar from Dian Wei, the two battled again. Dian Wei didn't have any moves, he just swung his halberd and slammed it into Taishir C.I. He knew that if he smashed one of the halberds, he would be able to finish off the man in front of him. Taishir C.'s body shape dodged left and right, no longer touching hard, occasionally flashing a few spears and hitting Dian Wei once. In this way, both sides fought back and forth for more than 50 rounds. Dian Wei began to get anxious, he was already injured, and if he dragged it on like this, he was afraid that it would be fatal sweeping a halberd, while Taishir C.I. was dodging, he pulled out an object from his bosom and shot it at Taishir C.I. Don't hurt anyone with a concealed weapon. Lu Zhang had been staring at the battlefield, and when he saw that Dian Wei had put his hand into his arms, he simply shouted. When it was too late, Lu Zhang shouted at the same time, the small halberd had already been thrown. Hearing Lu Zhang shout, Taishir C.I. instinctively leans back to avoid, but unexpectedly leans back too much and falls directly to the ground. Seeing this, Dian Wei was overjoyed and hurriedly raised his halberd, his eyes smashing ferociously at Taishir C.I. I didn't think I'd die here today. Taishir closed his eyes and waited for death to come. Don't hurt Zi. Lu Zhang watched Taishir C.I. fall and his heart raced. He couldn't care less and rushed towards Dian Wei with his longsword raised Lu Zhang boosted his run for a while, directly flew and jumped up, slashing at Dian Wei with all the strength of his body. Dian Wei did not dare to exchange his life for his life, his halberd turned and roared as he slashed at Lu Zhang. I'll finish you first. Ah. Lu Zhang tensed his nerves and roared to meet Dian Wei's halberd. Ding. A loud bang came. Dian Wei was knocked back three steps by Lu Zhang, his left hand grasping his trembling right hand with a look of shock in his eyes. Looking at Lu Zhang again, his long sword was directly cut off by Dian Wei, and his person flew out backwards. It crashed directly into a tree and then fell to the ground dead or alive. Duke. Taishir Si cried out, his heart in a great hurry. He was very clear about Dian Wei's strength and he was afraid that it would be hard to live this time. Thinking of his mother's parting advice, Taishir C.I. instantly reddened his eyes and waited for Dian Wei with his eyes wide open, thief. Take your life. Taishir C.I. picked up his lance and rushed towards Dian Wei with only one thought in his mind. Kill him. Looking at the already mad Taishir C.I., a trace of fear welled up in Dian Wei's heart. Just now the strike looked like Lu Zhang was finished, but in reality, Dian Wei was also injured. Although Lu Zhang's martial arts are poor, he has great strength from constant fitness. The full force of the blow caused the numbness and weakness of Dian Wei's arm to ache. The more Dian Wei fought, the more shocked, the person in front of him was already fighting for his life, attacking the vitals with every move. The current Dian Wei was only able to fight and had no power to fight back. I guess we're going to have to answer for it today Dian Wei's heart grew sad. He had first tangled with the fierce tiger and then fought with Taishir C.I. for dozens of rounds, and had long since reached his limit. Lu Zhang's full force strike added to his strength. After another thirty rounds, Dian Wei's physical strength had reached its limit, and the halberd in his hand had become very heavy as it could not be wielded. Taishir C.I. seized the opportunity and turned his spear, directly picking off Dian Wei's weapon. He then flew and kicked Dian Wei to the ground, flipped his wrist, and thrust his lance straight into Dian Wei's heart. Dian Wei couldn't help but close his eyes as he looked at the tip of the gun that was near his eyes. There are only two words in mind. Done. Chapter 19, A Misunderstanding Hold it, cough, cough, cough. Just as the lance was about to plunge into Dian Wei's heart, came Lu Zhang's feeble voice. Lu Zhang shouted too hard and coughed violently. Taishir C.I. was overjoyed to see that Lu Zhang was not dead not caring about Dian Wei, he hurriedly ran to Lu Zhang's side and looked up and down. How is the prince? Where do you feel sick? Looking at Lu Zhang's ghastly white face, his heart began to worry again. Okay okay. Z, don't worry that's it. Lu Zhang squeezed out a smile and nodded slightly. He did faint in the square, and Taishir C.I. picked off Dian Wei's halberd, which just happened to smash not far from Lu Zhang, waking Lu Zhang up. 
Lu Zhang saw that Dian Wei was about to be stabbed to death, and not caring about the pain in his body, he rushed out to stop it. Hey! What's up with that? Looking at Dian Wei, lying on the ground, Lu Zhang was very helpless. Couldn't take it in, almost got it killed. The two of us really aren't here to get you. Lu Zhang looked at Dian Wei with indignation, really wanting to slaughter him. The heart is again very reluctant. Fruity? Dian Wei also calmed down at this moment. If these two people really came to catch themselves, just from a strike they must be dead. The two of us went from Langya to Luo Yang, in search of you specially detoured to come to Guangzhou, who knew you were wanted by the government. His Excellency has been stranded for several days in search of you. You're an unreasonable man, you don't ask questions, you just pull out your sword. Taishir C.I. pointed at Dian Wei and cursed angrily, some of the bad anger in his heart. Dian Wei scratched his head and looked at Lu Zhang with a slightly reddened face. I, Dian Wei, am just a farmer and now a wanted man, what can you want with me? Lu Zhang took a deep breath to calm the pain. I am the son of Lu Yan, a member of the Han family, and current Zongxing, one of the nine ministers. I have heard that Dian Wei is chivalrous and cynical, and that his natural strength is unrivaled. That's why I went to all the trouble of finding you. But I don't want you to know right from wrong and kill good people in vain. Dian Wei did not say anything, indeed it is his fault, things are now since there is nothing to say. Are you convinced? Taishir C.I. roared angrily when he saw that Dian Wei did not speak. Dian Wei shouted angrily. No. Humph, you'll be a ghost under the gun soon, and you still dare to disobey. Taishir C.I. let out a cold smile, now it doesn't matter if he serves or doesn't serve. If it weren't for the fact that a certain person was first injured in a fight with a vicious tiger and later lost a weapon, would you be allowed to be arrogant here again? Dian Wei thought to himself that he wouldn't be able to live anyway, and just wouldn't give in. Z calm down. Lu Zhang stopped Taishir Cai, who was about to storm up, and looked towards Dian Wei. You are a member of my great Han dynasty, but you are disloyal for not thinking of serving your country. It is ungrateful to be raised by your parents, while you have no children at your knees. To kill innocents indiscriminately without asking questions is unkind. We ventured into the mountains to find you, and you were unjustly injured by a good man. Lu Zhang paused for a moment and suddenly raised his decibel and shouted. Being so disloyal, unrighteous, unkind, and unfilial, what kind of face do you have to exist in the world? Dian Wei's face changed greatly, wanting to retort, but Lu Zhang's words were sharp, every sentence reasonable, not allowing him to argue. A certain person is willing to die. Lu Zhang saw this look and demeanor of Dian Wei and knew that it was almost over, he went forward and tried to help Dian Wei up. Your Excellency must not put yourself in danger. Taishir Cai was startled and hurriedly stopped Lu Zhang he did not dare to let Lu Zhang take the risk, and if he received any more harm, he really did not have the face to see his old mother. If Lu Zhang dies here today, Taishir Cai is afraid that he cannot live alone. Lu Zhang shook his head at Taishir Cai still moving forward to try to help up Dian Wei. Z, come help. This guy was too heavy, and he hastened to greet Taishir C.I. Taishir C.I. stepped forward, and the two of them helped up Dian Wei. Dian Wei looked at Lu Zhang, with a somewhat confused look. What do you guys mean by this? You're not going to kill me? Dian Wei also do not want to die, better to die than to live, can live certainly choose to live. Lu Zhang straightened his clothes and face and began to recruit Dian Wei. Today's world is in chaos, with the foreign relatives and eunuchs in power and dictatorship in the front, and the Taiping Dao compelling the people in the back. This is a time of crisis. To be honest, I have been informed that the Taiping Dao is about to rebel and that chaos is coming. Lu Zhang does not measure his virtue and wants to extend great justice to the world and save the people from the fire. I know that Mr. Dang is a man of loyalty and righteousness, disloyalty, filial piety, benevolence, and righteousness are all jokes, I implore Mr. Dang, to help me. Lu Zhang bowed deeply, his tone sincere and his attitude distinct. Dian Wei was very moved, he was a coarse man, which had received such treatment. 
Mr. Duan is a wanted man, I'm afraid I'll cause trouble for your excellency. When Lu Zhang heard this, he immediately felt that recruitment was expected. There's no need to worry, strong man Dian, you were being chivalrous before. Li Yong, I have also heard of this person, relying on his family's lineage, doing wrong, get rid of it is also for the people to get rid of the harm. Rua Rua, follow me to the Daleks, and I'll keep you safe. Dian Wei Lu Zhang looked at each other with four eyes, and after a long time, Dian Wei fiercely knelt down. Your Excellency has traveled thousands of miles to seek me out, yet I harmed him, a capital offense. Now that Your Excellency has not abandoned me for my coarseness, it makes me doubly frightened. I owe you a life, and I will follow you in this life without any second thoughts. Saying so, he violently cowed out three times. Lu Zhang was overjoyed at his words and picked up Dian Wei with both hands. If you do not fail me, I will not fail you. Dian Wei looked at Taishir Si again with an apologetic face. Please forgive me for my offenses in the past. Taishir Si was also extraordinarily pleased with Dian Wei's allegiance and no longer blamed him I thought I was overstating it before, but now I realize that your excellency's eyes are as discerning as yours. I hope to teach you more in the future. Lu Zhang held the hands of the two of them, and the three of them directly iced out their differences. This is my evil coming. The three of them laughed, their laughter echoing through the woods. Chapter 20 First Look at Tiger's Nest Pass All three of them needed to recuperate after a few great battles. Lu Zhang is injured, and Dian Wei is wanted by several Go and cannot show his face, so only Taishir Si can return to the city to buy supplies. Half a day passed, and Taishir Si finally rushed back. Each of the three took care of their bodies and changed into clean clothes. After tossing and turning, for such a long time, several people were also hungry. Fortunately, Taishir Si brought back quite a lot of food Lu Zhang felt that he had already exaggerated quite a bit, but looking at Dian Wei's stuffed mouth, he realized what it meant to wolf down his food. Taishir Si saw Lu Zhang not eating and looked at Dian Wei, also looking over curiously. He was also surprised at how he ate. Couldn't help but scoff. How long has it been since Brother Don has eaten? Dian Wei didn't get angry when he heard it and laughed. While eating, he muttered. Life in the mountains is hard, everyday food is not enough to eat, today I saw this evil tiger, I wanted to kill and eat some meat to relieve my hunger, but I didn't want to meet you. Lu Zhang heard also cannot help but laugh bitterly, want to eat meat and kill tigers, Yu Dian Wei also counted ancient and modern head of a person. Lu Zhang and the two of them also stopped flirting with the hungry wolf like Dian Wei, and each of them packed up their things, ready to wait for him to finish eating and then set off after half an hour, Dian Wei finally burped in satisfaction. Brother Dian, have you had enough? Satiated satiated. Dian Wei looked at the ground of windswept clouds, a little embarrassed, wiped his mouth, and hemmed and hawed. This fierce man who kills without blinking and I actually has such a side. Taishir Si took the freshly purchased horse and handed it to Dian Wei. A few good don't have any good horses, so you'll have to make do with what you've got. Dian Wei muttered and took the reins, and Taishir Si didn't care about him, turning to mount his own horse. Lu Zhang and Taishir Si sat on their horses, ready to set off on their journey, but Dian Wei never moved with his horse it's getting late, we still need to leave early. Seeing that Dian Wei stood still Taishir Si voiced his urging. Dian Wei looked to both of them, then to his own horse, still not riding, and not speaking. Lu Zhang was also a bit puzzled and asked, can't ride a horse? Dian Wei's big black face reddened slightly, and he nodded. I can run and walk. Taishir Si was also a bit stunned, with a look of disbelief on his face. How did you escape the official siege? Dian Wei laughed, I walked while fighting, and the officers and soldiers didn't dare to come forward. Lu Zhang looked at Dian Wei and asked in a serious tone. If you are a general and can't ride a horse, can you do it? Not since. Looking at Lu Zhang's serious look, Dian Wei did not dare to laugh. In that case, you study with the two of us. Lu Zhang and Taishir Si began to teach Dian Wei how to ride a horse it was only five days later that Lu Zhang's three had just arrived in the vicinity of Hudian Pass. 
Dian Wei is really too stupid, Lu Zhang never thought that such a brave person would actually learn to ride a horse in two days. Still can't ride too fast, fall nose to nose not to mention, Lu Zhang three often after riding for a period of time, become two people. Dian Wei disappeared, and the two returned quickly to look for him, only to see that he was leading his horse furiously, fearing that he would fall too far behind. Lu Zhang still requested that Dian Wei ride a horse, not for any other reason, in the future, Dian Wei will definitely have to lead his soldiers in battle, he can't walk. In case of a losing battle, wouldn't it be impossible to run away? After so many rounds, Dian Wei gradually became skillful. Slowly he was able to keep up the pace. However, the time is also delayed a lot, originally a few Wu to the Tiger Prison Pass, hurrying two days will be able to arrive but the three of them took five days. Brother Duan, how about horseback riding over running? Lu Zhang looked at the woefully out of shape Dian Wei and scoffed. Dian Wei also didn't mind and laughed. Since it's a comfortable ride, ha ha ha, ha ha ha. The three of them laughed out loud again. Brother Dian has passed the age of weak crown, right? Can you write? Lu Zhang was curious about what the character of Dian Wei was, none of which was recorded in history. I'm not hiding it from you, sir, I am now twenty-five, my family is poor, my parents died early, and I have never been crowned. Your Excellency called me wicked before, how about I use this as a character? Taishu Si looked at Dian Wei and couldn't help but sigh. Brother Deng's bravery, I'm afraid the real evil lie is also inferior. The name of evil lie is well deserved. Since Brother Duan recognizes it, from now on, Brother Duan that is, the name way word evil lie. Thank you, sir, for the word. Looking at this horrible appearance of Dian Wei, Lu Zhang couldn't help but lament. I'm afraid that the real evil is just like that. As Lu Zhang was lost in thought, there came the voice of Taishir Si. Your Excellency, just ahead is the Tiger Prison Pass. Lu Zhang's mind was shaken as he hurriedly looked forward. A hundred battles into the Gaudi, the first pass in the central plains. The river returns to its nine bends, and the mountains of Shaohao are heavy with each other. Hudong Pass, also known as the ancient Banshui Pass and Bishui Pass. That's right. It's the Bom Shui Pass where Guan Yu warmed his wine and beheaded Hua Xiong in the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, but these two passes are actually one place. Hujing Pass is connected to Songyue in the south and bordered by the Yellow River in the north, with interlocking mountains and ridges, making it a heavenly danger of its own it is the necessary way to enter and exit from Luoyang. Lu Zhang looked out and took in the Hudian Pass. This pass is about six zhang wide and more than ten zhang high, with a formidable gait. It really is a one-man show. Taishu Si saw Lu Zhang looking out of his mind and couldn't help but sigh. Back then, Qin used the Hanga Pass to retreat a million men from the Six Kingdoms. In my opinion, this pass is no better. Lu Zhang gave an enunciation and nodded in recognition. This pass is about six fathoms wide, and there are at most six or seven pairs of ladders erected. The height is about ten zhang, and the well railings are no more than this height. If there are five thousand soldiers in the pass, I'm afraid that even 100,000 people can't break through. Taishir Si was silent, and even Dian Wei narrowed his eyes, not knowing what he was thinking Lu Zhang raised his head and looked at the sky, his eyes empty. The heart could not help but feel sad. Hudong Pass is still too far away for him, Lu Zhang needs to consider Mianzhu Pass, Jiaoming Pass, Yangping Pass, and even Tong Pass and Wuguan Pass. Hey, I don't know if I'll be able to raise my troops to this point in my life. I don't know if I'll be able to realize what I want in my heart. Retracting his mind, he looked at the two generals, behind him, slightly amused. Lu Bei's five tiger generals, Sun Quan's tiger ministers of Jianguo. Now Chao Chao's ancient evil is under his command. What reason is there for one to fail? I think Lu Bei also relied on Guan Zhang and his two men and was able to cross the world. Now I have one more than Lu Bei. Even if his literary and military skills are not stronger than Lu Bei's, they are by no means inferior to him. How can you not break out? It's just a shame there's no schemer. 
Thinking of schemers, Lu Zhang had another dark headache the wise and resourceful people are definitely from the family, and the commoners can't even read, so where do the resourceful people come from? Unless the monarch has great charisma, or the schemer has fallen on hard times to the point of not being able to survive, he will never follow Lu Zhang around. Like Sinyu Guijia in the Inchuan Academy, Lu Zhang couldn't even think about it. Forget it, take one step at a time. In the future, after entering Sichuan, at least Fa Jing will come to join us. The worst thing is to make a lot of effort in Ijou and wait for Zhuge Liang to grow up. I believe Zhuge Liang will not negatively affect him. Thinking of this, Lu Zheng's mood wasn't as bad Z, evil to come, now the chaos will come to its, Hu Guan Guan is the road to the east into the Luoyang, this is the place where soldiers must fight. I think soon, will certainly attract attention. Don't worry, your excellency, at that time, I will make a name for your excellency in the world. Dian Wei looked at Lu Zheng's back and shouted. Taishir Ci did not speak, but nodded vigorously in agreement. Lu Zhang's mouth smiled, very pleased. But did not pick up the conversation. He knows this is not his home turf. His home turf, in Ijou. He wants to take advantage of the time when the Guangdong lords are killing each other, to take complete control of the land of Ijou. The force of Taishir Ci Dianwei is an important dependence for Lu Zhang to cross the world. Z, wicked lie, we will need to rely on you two more in the future. Don't worry, your excellency. Lu Zhang looked at the duo who swore, satisfied a few moments later, the three of them crossed the tiger prison pass and headed for Luoyang.